Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we are going to break down the Arizona Desert and Rocky uh, Bighorn Sheep draw application and what have you. Uh, I've got Brian Rimza, a good friend of mine. Uh, you know, one thing that Rimza has going for him, well, he's got a lot of things going for him, but one thing that I think is pretty special is Brian Rimza has harvested an Arizona Desert Sheep. He has also harvested a Arizona Rocky Mountain Bighorn and Brian it's going to be great to have you on the phone to uh, go through some of these units and go through all the stats you're kind of a numbers guy like I am uh first of all how you doing Brian I'm doing good Jay thanks for having me on the podcast it's always fun to talk about things that I I love and I know you love sheep and uh you know I kind of love the numbers aspect of it I realize it's a long shot to draw some of these good tags but there's a few things you can do to I believe increase your odds and give yourself a, a better chance of pulling that once in a lifetime tag. And hopefully we can provide some of that information to the listeners and give them a better understanding of the, of the draw and maybe what they're looking at. At least that's my goal for, for this podcast, give people a better understanding of how this system works. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important because I think there's a lot of people out there that just think, Oh, I'll just apply for a sheep tag. And they, you know, they've, got less than max points and they throw in for a unit 22 tag and they're like man I've, i haven't drawn in you know 18 years and the reality is they really have wasted a point uh or or wasted a year uh because some of these tags if you don't have you know max points your chances of drawing them are, are sometimes zero i mean it's not like 0.001 some some years it's absolutely zero if all of the tags go in the max point pool you never even had a shot. So I think we're going to try and shed some light on some of the different things. And um, before we get started, Brian, you just um, uh, finished the, you know, I don't know what they call it, but the Arizona 3D series. Um, and you were fortunate to actually win the point total in your division. Uh, tell me a little bit about your 3D shooting and um it, it kind of came down to the wire yesterday, and you had a little bit of a lead, and you shot good, and another guy shot really well, and it, it was kind of a nail biter towards the end. Um, but congratulations on that. Yeah, thanks. It's uh, the 3D season is always fun in the summertime. It's something that I enjoy to do, you know, with my wife and friends, just to kind of keep you on top of your game. I enjoy shooting an unknown yardage competition just because it helps you out when you're out in the hunting scenario. <laughs> Excuse me, scenario, but. You know, it's just a, a good experience, and it was there's always good competition. I've been shooting with a lot of these guys for well over 10 years now, and we have just such a great time. And on any given day, you just don't know who's going to put it all together. And I was fortunate to shoot, actually, the best I've ever shot for three tournaments in a row. And, you know, I managed to win one leg of it. I took third in the last leg, and in this most recent one, I took second. And, you know, there's always good competition. It's always good fun, which I think is the most important part about it. And it gives you something to do in the off season where you can pick that bow up and uh, get out of the heat and go shoot some foam and have a good time. Yeah, for sure. Well, congratulations. Um, wh I was curious, um, which elite bow did you shoot? I know you shoot for elite. Which one were you shooting uh, in this competition? Uh, right now I'm shooting my energy, elite energy 35. That's that's my kind of my go-to outdoor bow. It has been for a couple of years now. One of the things I like to do is when I find something that works, I tend to kind of stick to it. Um, but it's definitely been my go-to outdoor 3D bow. And, you know, my hunting bow right now is the Elite Option 7 is the, the bow I'm shooting for hunting and getting ready to take that with me to British Columbia on a sheep hunt here in August. And uh, that's uh, the bow I'm getting ready for that hunt. Yeah, that's awesome. It's it's um that 35, that energy 35, that longer axle to axle, um it, it's just kind of a perfect 3D bow, is it not? Yeah, it's a little more forgiving bow. I mean, some guys like to shoot the Victory 37 and that's that's totally a solid bow too. I just the the 35 is really fit well for me and I just can shoot it very very consistent and consistency is typically the key to winning winning tournaments. Brian, uh, in 2013, uh, you're, you're one of my hunting partners, and we hunt together a lot, but in 2013, uh, you drew a 6A22 
uh, Rocky Mountain Bighorn tag there in central Arizona. And you had, uh, on a podcast before, you had already talked about how I believe when you were, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, had drawn a, a desert tag and already filled your desert tag. And, um, you know, you're, you're in your 30s and um, you, you drew this Rocky Mountain Bighorn tag and you said, I'm going to do it with a bow. And, you're a very experienced archer, obviously, from this, you know, the, the competition that we just talked about. And for many, many years, I mean, you're you're year in and year out one of the best shooters in Arizona with a bow um, going into the 2013 season with that 6A tag. Um, I, I felt like 6A was at a point right there where the sheep numbers, you know, were exploding and and um, those rams that had been transplanted or those sheep that had been transplanted in the unit there were finally rams of size that were born in the unit, you know, eight years old or, or over. Um, and there were still some ear tag rams around from the original transplant. Um, but talk a little bit about being a bow hunter and drawing that tag and how important it was for you to um, decide that you were going to, I mean, not even take a rifle. And I think I'm kind of going into your answer probably, but I think from my perspective, I see a lot of people say they're going to bow hunt, but then they take a rifle and they end up shooting it with a bow. Whereas you were dead set, I'm shooting it with a bow. Um, just kind of talk a little bit about drawing that tag and um, how how your mindset was as a bow hunter. You know, I mean, obviously I was ecstatic to draw that tag. Um, that year was the first year they had the Game of Fish had a split season hunt in 6A. So they had two tags basically the first two weeks of December, and then they had two tags the last two weeks. I drew one of the tags for the second hunt. And, you know, having that split season kind of helped me out because I felt like it gave me a chance to draw that tag because a lot of the guys with max points who are battling for those tags really want to have first dibs, and I can under, I can understand and appreciate that. Um, but, you know, I had a lot of scouting into that hunt, and I it was just – it was there was no doubt I was going to do it with my bow. I talked to – a couple other people who had been in there and hunted those sheep and another bow hunter who had killed what was the state record until I managed to tie him in 2013 um, in there. I think it was in 2010, which was the first year that they had that hunt. And it just, that was just the way I was going to do it. I was at a time in my life where I was able to take the whole season off, spend a lot of time scouting. It was close to my home. And, you know, I was in good physical shape to make that hunt, to make it count on that hunt. And, you know, as it turned out, the hunt itself was pretty short. I think we shot my ram about 2.30 in the afternoon on opening day. But that was mainly due to the fact that I had 17 days in scouting. Yeah. And you and I had basically been there three or four days before the hunting even opened. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, real fast about putting in, I believe you put in for that second uh, hunt as your first choice, meaning you knew it would give yourself a little bit better odds to not even put in for the the. Um, the first hunt, or maybe you did, I'm not sure your strategy there, but it's certainly you were eyeballing that as a good second choice, um, thinking that maybe your odds would be a little bit better going second. I think it was a little bittersweet for us, you know, scouting and what have you, because a couple of the biggest rams that we had literally fallen in love with, and you had some incredible video and pictures and, and what have you of, of a few of them, uh, and then to see, you know, I know that you're, you know, the two rams that you, you know, had your heart set on, both of them got shot on the first hunt. And it was like, I remember after the first one got shot, or remember I told you, I said, there's no way. I said, the, the chances of both rams getting shot are very, very slim. And then we find out that, you know, and great for the other hunters, we're, you know, we're not knocking the other hunters at all. Um, but that's what happens sometimes when you go second. But just the way it played out, both rams uh, that we thought were the, you know, the two biggest, both got shot on the rifle hunt, but, or you know, on the first hunt before you even got a chance to go. Talk a little bit about the mental part of, you know, having to go second and watching, you know, both rams that you really wanted got shot. You know, it was obviously I knew that it was a concern, but the fact is, I still had a sheep tag in my pocket, and the guy who killed the ram that I really wanted to kill was a guy named Art Sa Art Savolini. I probably pronounced that wrong, but he had been putting in for something like 55 years. <laughs> and he was an older gentleman who got in there and did it with his son. 
and kill the great Ram. And I mean, I couldn't be happier for the guy if, to kill the Ram. And, and they had done the work they needed to do, and they yeah. killed a great Ram. So I mean, yeah, and I couldn't yeah, and he was that. really was nice cool. to us, and and we we got to talk with them, and it, it was a there was it was no part of it that it was you know a big competition. It was we were happy for him truly, but it, it is heartbreaking when you you know you've you've been after certain rams and video and photo and and you know you you really get to to um you get your heart set but um you were able to uh harvest uh, you know what we thought was the number three ram and it turned out that he uh uh tied the state record which you know from the outset i remember you saying jay i think the state record um is is very achievable i think we can i think we can beat that and you know both rams the the number one and number two ram both scored higher and would have beat the the uh, state record and your ram uh ended up tying the state record which was pretty awesome yeah no i mean it was it was incredible experience i mean i couldn't have been happier i mean to have my whole family there and friends and to get the whole thing on video i mean it was just a great a great experience. I mean, how, how can you be upset about all of that great, th- all those great things happening? And I mean, you know, it was a Ram we set out to kill. We had tons of great video of them. And, you know, I've learned more about the unit now since that time. And, you know, even though I had spent 17 days in that unit, you know, I know there was some other Rams in there that were definitely Rams that could have been looked at at the time that we just never turned up. So, I mean, it's always, you never know when you're going to find that needle in a haystack somewhere kind of off the beaten path, but we worked hard at it and I'm super happy. You know, I'm sitting here talking to you now and I'm looking at my Ram in my house and I could, couldn't be more happy with how it all turned out. For sure. And, um, you know, uh, Dar got a client in there, um, with our guide service, Colburn and Scott Outfitters in 2015, and he was an archer as well. And uh, I know you and Dar worked closely together in, in Dar scouting and, and, um, there, there was uh, a ram that that Dar had had he had found what he called number one and number two, and they ended up killing uh, the number two ram, and um, it it beat the state record. Another ram in the in the unit, I believe, the same year was also of that state record quality, um, and then uh, Dar. The, his nickname number one uh you know he, he got real deep in his nicknames number one and number two but uh <laughs> Rand, randy spray your friend who's also an archer um great guy had max bonus points he put in for that 6a hunt in last season uh he he drew that uh 6a uh 22 uh north rocky tag in that same unit and um by golly you found number one and um uh, put put him on the ground with Randy Spray, and he he is the new state record. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Randy uh, Randy's a great guy. He's been putting in for something like forty some years, and you know we were in there. It was a split season hunt again, and you know there's another hunter in there that was trying to kill a particular ram that we 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 really liked. But uh, it was great because we worked well together. Those guys had found that other ram first, and so you know it was their ram to deal with, and we went out and ended up finding another incredible ram that we could have been happier um, taking. And, you know, the, Randy's ram ended up uh, grossing, game of fish gross was 183 and 28. And then uh, we ended up officialing him at 181 and 48, making him the new state record by almost four inches from David Brow's ram that, that was killed with uh, Dar the year prior. And it was just a great experience. You know, one of the cool things I think about sheep hunting is for the most part, there's no untold secrets. If you call guys that have had the tag, they're usually more than willing to talk to you. And in 2014, Ron Yee had the tag, and he called me, and we kept in contact a lot throughout his hunt. And, you know, Ron ended up killing a 180-inch ram in a, a place that was a little off the beaten path. And, you know, Ron couldn't have been happier, and it worked out that we were able to communicate because, you know, Everybody wants to see a guy with a once in a lifetime tag be successful. At least I sure do. And so I really enjoy being able to share that. And as you know, I'm a kind of a statistics nut. So I have a pretty in depth file on 6A, you know, where I spend my time, where I glass from, what Rams I've seen, a pretty good inventory of, of what is there. So it's, yeah. it's always nice to share that with other passionate people. Yeah. And I think, um, 
you know, what's really neat, I think, about um, 6A and the 22 North, I think, you know, like we said, um, there's finally now Rams that, that, you know, don't have ear tags that are born and raised in the unit, you know, that are that are now, you know, what, 10 years old. Um, I believe if my math is correct, maybe even 11 years old, potentially. Um, and it's just neat to see a unit that has thrived. Uh, you know, the, the split tags with the, um, the two hunts, I think, is the best way to do it. Um, you know, two and two, it gives the opportunity for guys to, you know, uh, feel like they're, they're not stepping on each other's toes. And, and, um, so, well, Brian, let's dive into the numbers. Um, let's dive into the numbers on the 2017 upcoming fall draw. And I think it's important for the listeners out there, first of all, to understand kind of how the draw works. Uh, for sheep in Arizona as opposed to they need to understand that the draw for sheep is different than the draw for uh, deer and elk and um, a a couple of statistics kind of to talk about first the 2017 bonus points this year uh, 28 is max there's 84 residents with max points there's four non-residents with max Uh, 27 points which is one under max there's 201 residents with uh, max 30 34 non-residents with 26 points there's 171 residents 44 non-residents at 25 points there's 144 residents 67 non-residents at 24 points there's 190 uh, and 83 non-residents at 23 it's 227 and 87 at 22 it's 239 and 117 and at 21 uh, it's 252 residents and 111 non-residents I think um, you know it's pretty important to know that if you're not in the max pool yes you may have a little bit better chance say if you have 25 points as opposed to 12 um, but really, it's either you're in the max or you're not. Is that which is that the way you interpret it, Brian? Yeah. Hey, real quick, Jay. Um, Need to take a break. I think I think you misspoke. Twenty-seven. My my numbers say that twenty-seven is max, and I know that Hunt and Pool says twenty-eight. But I'm looking at the 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 stats from the Game and Fish Department as of April seventeenth of twenty seventeen. And 27 is the maximum number of points going into the draw, according to that. And I don't know where their numbers came from. Okay. Well, regardless, um, uh, you, you need to, each of the listeners need to um, look up and see the amount of. I think it's 28, but I I, I could be wrong. Um, Brian, if it says 27 on the bonus point pass, that would be 27 as of last year, wouldn't it? No, it's published from April 17th of 2017. So it would have been, this is published after the spring draw results came out. So it's the most accurate number you can have. Okay, so So, according to your records, 27 is max. So there's 84 residents uh, with max points and four non-residents, correct? That is correct. Okay, so then just drop down. So with 26 points, there'd be 201 residents and 34 non-residents and and on down the the line um there's a hundred and four if my if my numbers are right there's a hundred and four total tags this year and you get two choices of course there's five on the application but for sheep really only the first and second choice are the ones that matter and roughly about 20 of those tags are going to go in the max point pool which leaves about 84 tags in the random draw. And Brian, explain how the uh, Game and Fish does this sheep draw as far as uh, for the deer draw, they do it per hunt code and per unit. So max point holders for that hunt or for that unit. And for the sheep, they do it overall. So in, in, in rough terms, if they'd have 104 tags, they take 20% of the total. Yeah, let's, so I'll just run the numbers for you for last year. So last year, um, there was 22 total tags drawn in the max draw. And of those tags, 16 went to desert, 
uh, were desert tags and six were rocky tags. So for this year, you're looking at 104 total permits. Um, that's including deserts and rockies. And there's 13 rocky tags in there. And then you subtract that from your 104. So you're going to get, what, 91 desert tags. 20% of those tags will go to the max bonus point holders. Now, Arizona does not differentiate when you put in for sheep between desert and Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep. So 20% of those 104 tags will go to max bonus point holders. And it's for all of bighorn sheep, not hunt code specific. So basically you're going to see 20, if my math is correct, you're going to see another 22 tags that are going to be going in the max pool of those 20 of the 104 tags 10 percent are allocated could be allocated to non-residents not a guarantee so roughly um what is it 14 tags or no it'll be roughly 11 tags 12 tags could go to non-residents and five or six of those will go to non-residents with max and i mean in your non-residents with max pool you only you have only have four non-residents at max which right. gives them a chance to draw, but again, they're still competing for those max tags with the not with the residents, and there's 84 residents. So I mean, and what the I way think, my numbers go ahead. Go ahead. What I think is interesting is last year there was five non-residents. This year there's four, so that means only one non-resident in the max pool drew last year. Yeah. So I mean, it's just definitely interesting how that changes, and I mean, it means that only one non-resident at all drew because i mean the non-resident who has max is still eligible to draw on the random but yeah only one non-resident with max points got drawn last year but that could be indicative of a lot of things i mean if my guess is those non-residents with max are swinging for the fences in the 22 yeah and the 22 tags and it's just you're still competing with 84 residents this year that want those tags right and You know, so it's something you got to evaluate. I mean, and I think you said it earlier, is that you're either someone with max or you're everybody else. Yeah. So if you're someone with max, you got to evaluate your draw strategy. And if you're everybody else, you got to figure out, you you should have a different draw strategy than those people with max. I mean, last year, I know two guys that drew with max tags, Randy Spray being one of them, but Randy... I had never killed the desert. And I asked Randy, I said, what do you want out of your sheep hunt? I mean, what are you looking for? And he wanted to kill a great ram with his bow and have a great experience. And I said, look, you really, really should look at potentially putting in for 6A the first hunt because I think we could have an incredible experience and I know we could kill a great ram with your bow. And so he ended up putting in 22 first choice and then 6A second choice and he drew the 6A tag. Um, the other person I know that put in with Max was Marvin Zeser, and Marvin is also a diehard uh, bow hunter, and he drew the 22 tag, and he killed a ram in 22 that ended up going 173 and 2.8, which is, you know, easily Boone and Crockett and easily Pope and Young, you know, great ram to kill with your bow. But, I mean, you got to figure out what you want as a hunter. I mean, you know, I talked to Randy, and I said, you know, you're probably going to get one shot at this. What do you want? And he opted to go with the Rocky Hunt. And I don't, I don't think he regrets that one bit because we had one heck of an experience. Yeah, and I mean, he, he's got the state record now. And, you know, he shot a beautiful ram, uh, you know, and, and was able to do it with you as buddy. And um, you guys ha- had a great time. So I think that's important, too. You know, people email me, they call me, they're asking me all the time what units to apply for. And I think you bring up a good point. What are you looking for? Like, you know, do you just want to, you know, draw a hunt that you can, you know, have a chance to kill a, you know, 160 ram? Um, you know, do you want a, a, a hunt that if you draw, you want to, you know, have a chance at a book ram? I mean, because there's some units in here that very likely that you're not going to have a chance at a book ram, but you have better odds to draw the tag, but you're going to be looking at, you know, 150 160 rams and if if that's okay there's certainly a whole level of tier of units that you could look at with maybe the hopes that you know maybe you can find something over 160 um and then there's the guys that say you know i'm i'm still fairly young and i feel like i want to have a chance at a book ram well you need to be applying for units that one you can uh, that you can actually draw 
and two, that you can actually, when you draw, have a chance to shoot a book type ram. So we're going to go through all the units and try and give as much numbers as we can and, and let people make their own decisions. I, I think one of the important things to, to note, if you're a non-resident, you have to apply for units with two or more permits. And every year there's non-residents that apply for one tag units and they never even get a chance. They don't get kicked out of the draw, but they're not even, there's, there's no non-resident tags for those one tag units. So you have to have two or more. And then I believe if the units have four or more tags, a non-resident can have up to two of those tags. So there's a, there's a couple units out there that are four tag units, such as 12B East, uh, 40B Gila's has four, 15D has four, 43B had seven, now they're at five, so there's an opportunity for two non-resident tags. 45A has four, 46B East has four, and 46B West has four. So there, right there, uh, there's an opportunity for uh, a non-resident to get two tags. Not saying they're going to, but they can get up to two. Yeah, and you know, for non-resident, it's pretty easy. If you're at max point, one of the four guys is max point. Do what you want to do. You know, you still can't draw a unit with one one permit, but focus on the units where you want to tap. You know, where you want to kill a big ram. Because I mean, I assume that those guys that have been putting in for that long are guys that are diehard sheep hunters. Maybe have killed desert rams in other places and are looking to have kill the biggest ram possible because Arizona's got some incredible rams. Um, I think you said 27.5% of the rams killed last year for desert sheep were Boone and Crockett rams uh, based on the Arizona Game and Fish check-in score, which I would venture to say that percentage is maybe a couple percentage high just because... Once they get an official... Yeah. So, yeah, yeah but, I mean, that that's a good point. 87 deserts were harvested. There were 24 book... Arizona, you know, green scored by Game and Fish, 24 of those 87 were, were 168 or better. So that's 27.5%. And there were 16 Rockies harvested and four book rams. So four were Game and Fish scored over 180. That's 25%. And the auction hunter for Rockies hasn't harvested yet. So, I mean, and he'll kill a ram over 180, I would imagine. So. Yeah. And, and, and so to me, those numbers of 27 and a half percent and 25, even though you may bring up a good point that game and fish score not sometimes isn't always official, but you know, l let's say 25% of deserts, you have a chance if, you know, of what was harvested last year as a book ram, that's pretty stinking good. No, I mean, Arizona Game and Fish Department's done a really good job managing the sheep. Um, you know, everyone has their own opinion, and I'm sure there people have opinions on different things that they could do differently, and myself included. But in the long run, I mean, there's not a state out there, I think, other than Nevada that provides more opportunity for non-residents to hunt desert sheep. And But, I mean, we've got incredible quality here, a long season with lots of great sheep. And, you know, if you're a non-resident and you're applying for elk and you know, mule deer and everything else, you know, it's a good, it's a good uh, investment of your $15 application fee uh, to apply. And now that they changed the way the draw is broke down for the non-residents, you know, every non-resident has a chance to draw a tag every year because half of the non-resident allocated tags has to go into the random draw. So you got a chance to draw that tag, but you got to choose wisely where you put in and if, if you're not choosing wisely, you're just wasting your time and uh, wasting your money and wasting your picks. And you can't really afford to do that with desert sheep because the odds are just too hard when it comes to drawing a tag. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's let's kind of go through the units uh, one by one and um, try and give as much information as we can uh, so that the listeners can can, you know, try and take some of this information uh, take some of this data and, and make an informed decision. Uh, right off the bat, you've got uh, uh, hunt number 6001, uh, unit 9 and 10. Now, unit 9 and 10, there's one tag. Uh, one of the interesting things about this hunt is it's one of the only desert uh, hunts that give all of October, all of November, and all of December to uh, hunt this, this tag. And this is in the Cataract Canyon. 
Uh, so this is between, uh, you know, the Cataract Canyon is the border between unit nine and 10. And I think it's important to note that on this hunt, the reason that they give you three months to harvest is because it's very, very difficult and very, very few sheep. Um, if we look at the numbers uh, last year, uh, there was a 152 inch ram, a seven year old ram, uh, he's 28 by 32 at 13 and a half, 13 and five inch, eight inch bases um and i i think it's it's it needs to be noted that you know that is known as one of the hardest hunts i think one thing that's interesting is uh he harvested it looks like hunter days was one so he hunted one day uh if if my numbers are correct he hunted one day and was able to harvest uh, that ram, uh, but I've seen guys on that hunt where, you know, they get 15, 18, 20, 30 days in on that hunt. If you look at the first choice applicants last year in 2016, there were 113 people that applied for that unit nine, unit 10 tag. And if you look at 2014, there were 64 people. In 2015, there were 90 people. And so last year, it was a one in 113 uh, chance to draw that tag. And it's those are Nelson I sheep there. And I would consider that a very, very tough unit that would definitely not be on my radar as something that I would tell people to put in for. Um, obviously, there's only one tag, so it only goes to a resident. Um, but if you're willing to spend a bunch of time, um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, you can you can get it done there but they give you three months uh to do it and if i'm looking at my uh sheet here in 2013 uh there was 143 inch ram harvested and if i look at my 2014 notes here uh there was 160 inch ram uh harvested it was only a six-year-old ram and it and it scored 160 so that's that's pretty good uh and then in 2015 uh there was 154 inch ram uh harvested on that hunt do you have anything to add on that nine and ten brian no super difficult hunt i mean that 160 ram is a giant for that ram or for that unit the one they killed in 2014 and i mean they've steadily stayed the last couple of years right around that 150 152 mark just a very difficult hunt i think it's mostly going to be your local guys that have local knowledge that are going to be putting in for that hunt. And I mean, it gives you an opportunity to hunt sheep and, you know, people have been pretty successful doing it. It's just, it's very difficult. Yeah. Then we've got the, um, the, uh, 12, a 12 B hunt. Um, and that can be also another very tough hunt. I believe that's kind of the snake gulch area. There's one permit. So this is for residents only. If we look at the number of applicants last year, there were 70 first choice applicants. In 2014, there were 54 applicants. In 2015, there were 54 as well, or excuse me, 52 in 2014, 54 in 2015, and then 70 last year. And uh, that ram uh, looks like the guy harvested, but it was, uh, it was, a, it was a smaller uh, ram, a young ram. Uh, and if you go back and look at my sheets here uh, for 2013, uh, let's see, there was 154 inch ram. In 2014, there was a 128 inch ram. And in 2015, there was a 161 inch ram. Uh, so definitely another one of those units that you know, definitely if you just want to draw a sheep tag and, you know, have, you know, decent odds. So a one in 70 chance, that's decent odds. Those are Nelson I sheep uh, that that might be a unit for you. But I think, the, you know, it's going to be very difficult to find sheep. I think it's pretty rough getting around. Definitely not one on my list that I would recommend. And does not work for non-residents. There's only one unit or one permit. I'm sorry. Correct. Uh, if you jump over to 12B East, that's hunt number 6003. That's December 1st through the 31st. Um, now that that has uh, four tags in the unit. And if you look at the number of applicants in 2014, 
uh, there were three tags for two, 203 applicants for three tags. If you look at 2015, there were three app, or three tags available, uh, uh, 321 applicants. And then last year, there were four uh, tags available for 460. Um, so that's you know well over a one and, and a hundred in your application. And, and if you look at the um, rams that were harvested, it looks like uh, several 149 rams, a 147 ram, and then it looks like maybe someone last year did not harvest. Um, those are Nelson I sheep as well. As far as I know, Brian, those sheep on that's the Perea Plateau up there uh, on the North Kaibab. They have not been infected yet, uh, as far as I know, uh, with pneumonia, which is a which is a good thing. Yeah, I haven't heard anything like that. And I mean, last year it looked like they killed just some average 150 rams, but a couple of years, the year prior to that and the year prior to that, so 2015 and 2014, they did manage to kill a couple rams in the 60s uh, that were nice sheep, but I've never been in that unit and I'm not experienced in there. But I mean, it gives you an opportunity for permits. Uh, Non-residents obviously could have a crack at two tags and it give you a chance to kill a desert ram. Cause I mean, when you talk to people about killing bigger desert rams, it's just not a unit that comes up in conversation. So I, I would say that it, it does have more favorable odds of potentially drawing. Yeah, I, I talked to Russ Jacoby. Um, he likes to guide in that unit, and he talked about that 12B East. If you guys are interested in that 12B East, make sure to listen to that uh, last episode that I did with Russ Jacoby here a couple days ago. Um, Brian, let's jump to, to hunt number 6004. That's 13A. Uh, there's one permit in 13A. And uh, last year, there were 84 first choice applicants. In 2014, there were 61. In 2015, there were 59. Uh, so they saw the applicant numbers go, you know, 1 in 84. Um, and it looks like uh, a, a 164 RAM, if my, if my chart's right. Yeah, 164 RAM, so pretty good RAM. Uh, was harvested on that 13A. I know historically that can be a pretty tough hunt. If we look back here in 2013, it looks like they actually didn't even have a hunt. Uh, in 2014, a 165 ram was killed. In 2015, a 174. Oh, I remember that big, beautiful 174 ram. I believe Ryan Hatch was um, helping the guy. Um, so that, you know, that potentially might be a sleeper. I know it's tough, but, you know, uh, with, with only one tag in there, um, you know, obviously that two years ago, they were able to find a, a darn good Ram over 170. Yeah, no, I mean, the 174 Ram's a giant. Um, I know, I know our friend Joel Lee had that tag years ago, you know, I think it was a different unit then, but it's, she's hunts about as hard as anybody I know. And she, you know, it was difficult on her. But it seems like they've started to produce a couple of pretty decent rams, and I think the potential to shoot a book ram and looks like it might be there just strictly from the numbers. I've never been in 13A looking for sheep specifically, but uh, it's it's an opportunity. It looks like to potentially crack that, you know, Boone and Crockett minimum of 168, and it's a one permit hunt. So I mean, you're not competing with anybody else. Yeah, and um, the next hunt is uh, 13B uh, North, which uh, a, a year ago they dropped it from four to three, so it's the same. It's it's three tags, and 13B North is kind of the crown jewel of that northern, um, you know, north of the Colorado River uh, hunt. It those are Nelson I sheep. Uh, last year there were 729 first choice applicants for three tags. Uh, in 2014, there were 403 applicants, and in 2015, there were 478 applicants. Um, I have spent some time in 13B North. Um, that is up there in the Virgin River Gorge. Um, I, I did a little bit of looking. Uh, one of the years we, you know, Dar and I have guided that raffle uh, hunter, which can hunt those Nelson I units. Uh, spent a little time up there, and um, you know, 
if if you look at the Rams that they killed last year, they killed it looks like a 148, a 161, and a 172. Uh, the 161 Ram was a nine-year-old, and the 172 and seven eighths was a six-year-old Ram. Uh, and it looks like it was you know 33 and an eighth uh, on on its right side and 35 on the left uh, with 16 and 16 and and an eighth inch bases. So um, you know historically 13B uh, produces some pretty good sheep. Like I said, it's kind of the crown jewel. Um, if you go back to 14, they killed a 153, a 163, and a 155. If you go back to 2014, uh, they killed a 151. It looks like someone didn't kill in a 172. Actually, Ryan Hatch killed that 172 Ram uh, that was an eight-year-old that was 34 in length and 14 and seven inch bases. And it was just a beautiful carried mass throughout the whole horn. Um, and if you look at 2015, in 13B North, there was a 156, a 168, and a 160. Uh, Matt Schimberg uh, shot a 10-year-old ram that was uh, looked like a just over book, 168 and 78. So definitely, um, a, a you know, crown jewel of of you know, kind of that Nelson Eye, above, you know, north of the Colorado River. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, I've put in for before, or and recommending people put in for. I mean, I think the potential is there to kill a, a book ram. It's pretty realistic, I think, to do that. It's a little, it's a long ways to go. So I think a lot of people have a hard time spending time scouting up in there. But uh, it's definitely a hunt that can be very rewarding with some beautiful sheep coming out of there. Yeah, and it's it's some really incredible um country as far as uh, scenic country that Virgin R- River Gorge. You actually drive into Nevada and then into Utah. Um, a lot of times, depending on which side of the gorge, you know, you kind of have to jockey around to 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 get around in there. Um, but it it's some very very pretty country for sure. Uh, let's jump down to uh, 13B South now. 13B South is a, a, a one tag unit and in 13b south last year uh, there were 38 first choice applicants in 2014 there were 25 in 2015 there were 36 looks like a 149 inch ram uh, was killed uh, last year and historically I think 13b south is is a pretty tough unit if I go back to 13 um, a 155 if I go it looks like a ram was not killed in 14 if I go to 15 uh, there was no kill also so obviously that that sounds like anytime there's a no kill a lot of times that's uh, you know pretty shows a pretty tough unit would you agree brian yeah i mean i am i've never i've never known anyone to hunt that unit and i mean i've just it's got to be a difficult hunt so i mean just apply with caution obviously and know what you're getting into i mean if you're someone who doesn't have any points and you're like what the heck you know and if i draw a tag i'm gonna go hunt and go for it yeah and then let's let's talk about 15a 15b let's go ahead and talk about 15c uh north 15c south um and and make everybody aware that all of these units are one tag units uh these used to be very very good units but we've had a pneumonia die off uh in in each of these units and in some of them we've lost anywhere from say 40 percent up to 70 maybe even 80 percent of the sheep Uh, a lot of the older age class rams for sure are dead and i would definitely be um you know if if you're just looking to kill a sheep maybe to complete your your slam or something as a resident you know your odds potentially could be uh quite a bit you know could be pretty good but i'm just telling you that with with the die off i i think these are units that um you know are are gonna see a better day you know seven eight ten years from now and i think think I think you need to steer clear from. Go ahead, yeah. Did we have a little uh, interference I think the, there? I think the, uh, no, I think the 15 units have a place for certain people. Um, I think if you're 
a person who just would like to kill a sheep and would like to experience a sheep hunt, then I think that you could potentially apply for those units. Um, obviously, if you're someone who's trying to hunt for a quality animal or, you know, has built up some points, and wants to apply for something a little better, then I think that you obviously want to steer clear of those. But I mean, if you're a first time sheep hunter and it's not the hugest, or I shouldn't say the hugest, the most important thing to you, and you just want a chance to go kill a sheep, you might look at those because I can venture to say that most of your guys with a lot of points are going to steer far, far away from 15D or 15B, 15C, right. and even 15E this year just because they're going to be scared of what they're going to find or what they're not going to find, I guess. Yeah, and if you look at last year um, in 15B West, they did kill a 10-year-old 152. In C North, they killed a 163. In C South, they killed a 162. I mean, so that's fantastic, um, you know, for, for what they had to deal with. The question is, between last year and this year, what else has died? But like I said, for the guy that's just like, I just want to shoot a sheep and, you know, wants to just go up i'm sure you can go up there and kill a ram so i mean your odds you're probably looking at a pretty decent opportunity um to draw a tag you just need to know what you're getting into now i can speak specifically about 15d i've spent a lot of time in 15d and for all of the nelson i units i talk about you know uh, 13b north as the crown jewel um it is north of the colorado river but but truly 15d as in david um for years has been just the best unit for for numbers of sheep and um you know tons and tons of sheep several years in a row they 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 surveyed you know over 500 sheep uh you know i i I had days in there you know we had the super raffle hunter i believe um you know handful of years and and you know there would be days when i would literally see 80 to 100 sheep in a day and there's not many units in the state of Arizona that you can say that about. Now, I had a hunter, actually an archery hunter in 15D last year. And I believe there were yeah six permits last year. And if you look at what was harvested, you know, there was uh, 164, 162, 167, 147, 161, and 151. What I can tell you is that there were uh, about a quarter to my eye, I would tell you there was about 25 to 30 percent of the sheep. So in other words, some were, well, they were dead, probably 50, 60, 70 percent of the sheep were gone. But because the numbers in 15D were so high, we were still seeing sheep and we were still seeing rams. Uh, it was a little difficult to find any of the older age class rams. We were able to find a 10 year old ram. Uh, that my guy shot with his bow and he was tickled pink. But um, again, they dropped 15D from six now down to four. Uh, And if you look at the numbers last year, there were 1,127 people that applied for those six tags and dropping it down to four. I think the the first choice applicants are going to drop again, Um, but they also dropped it by two, you know, from six to four. So I think your odds are still going to be, you know, pretty stout and i i believe they've had more die off since since we were there last year so i would be you know know what you're getting into when you when you put in for the 15s uh for sure yeah i mean the 15s 15 d in particular i think is a great bow hunter friendly unit but yes. obviously you got to deal with you got to deal with multiple tags and rams that are going to be sick um my understanding is that every ram that was killed last year in 15d i know for sure all had pneumonia yes every every ram that was every ram that was harvested they sent in a, and got tested and every ram had pneumonia and the thing is is that game and fish does highlight in the note section of all of the 15 units it's note 26 telling you that those sheep are diseased so make sure you pay attention to that you're going to deal with die-offs you're going to deal with lower numbers and you may deal with some one horned rams because once they get sick you know a lot of the, the horns will start to show that and you'll half the horn will break off and things like that so just know what you're getting into but at the same time it could give you a chance a better chance to hunt desert sheep um because a lot of people are going to steer away from that 
Yep, for sure. Uh, if you look at the next choice, which is hunt number 6011, that's obviously the month of December. Also, we've got uh, unit 16A uh, and uh, unit uh, 16, which is 16A, uh, in excluding the portion 16A south and east of the Big Sandy River and Mojave County. That's talking about the Mojaves uh, in unit 16A. There's two permits in there. I spent uh, quite a bit of time in 16A over the years looking for raffle tag rams. Uh, it is a very, very big, very, very broad, very vast unit. There's not a lot of sheep. You can look for a long time and sometimes go days and not see sheep. Uh, but if you look at uh, what was harvested in there last year, a 167 and a 154 uh, ram. And in years past, if you go back to um, 16A in 2000, and let me look at my sheet here. In 2013, uh, there was a 167 and a 169. Uh, and if you go to 2014, uh, there was a one, uh, there was three tags that when it was all one unit, there was a 171, a 159, and a 156. And if you go to 2015, uh, you've got a no kill and a 150 ram. Uh, so it's, I think 16A, uh, both units, um, both, both portions of 16A are kind of sleeper units. I think there's rams in there that slip through the cracks because it is so vast uh it's definitely a, a unit that is on my radar um i think it also has potential to, to to get infected by some of this pneumonia i don't know of any uh sheep that have been discovered that do have pneumonia in 16a but it's close enough to 15d that you know there could be some sheep wandering there um so i would i would be aware of that but i definitely think 16a is is a sleeper unit to find a you know a, a book ram uh it's a tough tough hunt but i th i think the you know the chances are, are are there for a book ram yeah I, I mean i know i had a friend that had a tag in 2014 and he ended up hiring a guide and he killed that 171 out of there in 2014 it was a nine-year-old ram but i mean just generally looking at the pattern it's big country but you, you do have a chance to to track into the, that over that 168 mark, which, uh, you know, the Boone and Crockett minimum and get yourself a pretty solid Ram. And, it, you know, there's a lot of country in there. So, I mean, even with, what is it, two tags, you can kind of get away from everybody else. Or it's, was it one tag? It, it well, split two tags for that. And then 16A South has one tag. So yeah, it gives you a chance to get away from everybody. Yeah. And I think the next hunt, uh, 6012, which is 16A South and 18B, now, I think that is something that, that uh, you know, it's obviously only one tag, so it's only for residents. But this is something that, you know, I think someone could find a decent ram. And, and part of that is 18B. Um, you know, 18, 18B, the first year that 18B was open, I believe, was uh, 2013. And in, in 2013, you know, those are transplanted sheep, and they've been transplanting sheep in there. A uh, 161-inch ram was killed in 2013. If we look here in 2014, 148-inch ram in 14. And if you look in uh, uh, 15, a in 18B, which is now 16A South and 18B, a, a six-year-old 156-inch ram. And then last year in 18B, there was a 171-inch ram. Uh, and it was only a five-year-old ram, and it scored 171. It had its 35 and two eighths on the length, you know, 15 and seven eighths in spaces. Um, I think I think that 16A, 18B uh, is a little bit of a sleeper being combined. I, I think there's an opportunity there to kill a book ram. Um, that it, you know, I think it's going to be a tough hunt, but I think there's a chance for a book ram there. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, the numbers definitely show it, and it gives you that opportunity, you know, and a lot of people, when it comes to sheep, you just need the opportunity because you can't kill a sheep if you don't got the tag, so you yeah. kind of got to play the odds. 
Yeah, and uh, in 2016, it was a 1 in 69. So there were 69 first choice applicants. Um, so I, I definitely think that's something that should be on people's radar. It's not going to be easy, but I definitely think, you know, have it on your radar. Uh, let's jump to the next one, uh, unit uh, 16B. Uh, 16B has one tag, so it's not available for non-residents. Uh, 16B last year, uh, there were 64 uh, applicants. Uh, in 2014, there was actually two tags. There was 131 applicants, so a 1 in 65. In 2015, uh, it was a 1 in 42, and then obviously, like I said, in, in 16, there were 64 applicants, and the Hunter in 16B last year shot a 9-year-old 156-inch ram, and if I go to my notes here, in 16B uh, in 2013, there was a 165 and a 155. Uh, in 2014, there was a 115, it looked like a three-year-old ram, so someone just shot a young ram. Uh, in 2015, uh, in 16B, there was a 157 nine-year-old. So, I mean, that's that's definitely one, two, uh, you know, a one in 64, that's, that's not too bad of odds. Uh, those are Nelson I sheep as well. Um, and I believe you could get some kind of rollover potentially there of, of a Mexicana or two in that unit. Um, that's right on the Colorado River and um, it not known for giant sheep, but uh, definitely a one in 64, not too bad of odds. Yeah, no, I mean, it definitely gives you a great opportunity to, you know, kill a good ram. And I mean, it's just a different op different. You got to know what you're getting into, and I mean, you got an opportunity to kill a big ram, and so that's what a lot of people want to do. I mean, it hasn't produced giants, but they could they could be there, you know. Let's go to the next unit, which is hunt number six zero one four. That's obviously in the month of December. It's twenty two south. There's two tags. Uh, I believe twenty two is the best <laughs> desert sheep uh, unit in the state of Arizona. Obviously, with two tags, it's available for. Uh, non-residents and residents. Uh, last year, there were 1,537 applicants uh, for Unit 22. It typically always goes in the max point pool. Uh, if you look at 2014, there were three tags available, 1,761 applicants. Uh, in 2015, there were four uh, uh, tags available. There were 1,868 applicants. Uh, 22 I have spent a lot of time in Unit 22 myself. Uh, was in there with Ernie Maskey in 2012, I believe, uh, and he shot a, a really nice 186, uh, 86 and 7 eighths uh, inch ram. And then uh, Craig Dunlap in 2015 uh, shot a really nice kind of um, uh, mid to high 170s uh, ram in 22. And I believe Unit 22. Uh, is the best hunt in the state. If I was a non-resident with max points, that would definitely be uh, in my top two choices. Uh, definitely, you know, the best unit, I believe, for for fun hunting, numbers of sheep, and quality rams. Yeah, I mean, let's just point out that if you don't have max, do not even think about putting in for 22. And secondly, it's a great hunt, but it is, uh, predominantly a boat hunt, so you're doing a, spending a lot of time in a boat. So you need to make arrangements prior to the hunt to have access to utilize the boat. Otherwise, you will considerably handicap yourself in being able to hunt the unit uh, effectively. I would say is that that's fair assessment. Would you not say? Yeah, I mean you basically have Saguaro Lake, Canyon Lake, and Apache Lake, and all of Unit 22 can be accessed off of those lakes. Now, there are spots that are accessible off of the lake as well, but in general, um, a lot of your scouting, a lot of your hunting is going to be right off of those three lakes. Uh, and so definitely, if you don't have a boat or access to a boat, uh, you need to arrange for one, hire a guide, or or rent a boat or buy a boat for that matter because you definitely you can get around a lot better uh, if you have a boat. If, like you said earlier, uh, Marvin Zeiser uh, shot a you know a, a low 170s ram with his bow. 
there was a gentleman that shot a 181 inch eight-year-old ram last year uh, in there and if you go to 2013 uh, there was a 180, a 175, and a 180. Uh, if you go to 2014, there was a 175, a 184, and a 171. And in 2015, uh, there was a no kill, a 177, a 179, and a 178. Um, so the quality is here. Um, I like that the fact that there's only two tags. Um, the last time that I guided in there was in 2015 and there was four and it was a little cloggy, a little, you know, a little felt like you were kind of stepping on everybody's toes. Uh, but with only two tags, just a phenomenal hunt uh, and uh, really recommend it to anybody there with max points. Okay, Brian, um, the next hunt is... Um, Six zero one. Well, yes, uh, twenty four B North. There's one tag, obviously only available to residents. Uh, last year, twenty uh, four B North was a one in two hundred and three. Uh, in two thousand fourteen, it was a one in one hundred and eighty seven, and in two thousand fifteen, it was a one in one hundred and fifty six. Uh, the hunter last year, according to my records, the hunter last year did not kill. I'm not sure if that's 100% correct, but it um, doesn't show it here on my chart uh, of having killed. Uh, in years past, uh, some nice rams. If I look back to 2013, uh, a 179. If I go to 14, uh, a, a 170. And if I go to 2015, um, let's skip here. 2015, a... 178 eight-year-old was sh or excuse me 174 nine-year-old was shot uh, 24b north I, I really like that unit um, it is as well accessible by canyon lake and apache lake it's basically when you go up the river chain or up the lakes on canyon it'd be everything on your right and when you go when you're going say from uh up or downstream to upstream or you know south to north everything on your right uh on apache lake would be 24 uh b north as well um i like the fact that there's only one tag in there and historically there's there's pretty good rams and you know you're looking at basically a one in 200 chance uh to draw that so the odds aren't great but the quality's good yeah and i, I think that just so everyone knows we're basing our stats off of the game and fish harvest data data and some of that could have changed so that guy could have harvested in there and we just don't have the data but yeah for, for what we have it shows he did not harvest last year yeah uh let's let's jump to um 24b south which is hunt number 6017 there's one tag so it's not available for non-residents i put this in the you know definitely the the top two maybe three units in the state historically 24b south uh, is, is, you know, if not the best in the state, it's one of the best in the state. Uh, and if you look at last year, uh, it was a one in 210 uh, chance of draw. If you look at 2014, there was actually two tags in there and it was a uh, two and uh, two, four, it looks like a two, two tags for 345 applicants. And in 2015, there was two tags with 413 applicants. Uh, so basically a one in 210, that's not very good odds, uh, but the quality is here. Quality is here. They shot a 185 inch Ram last year that's had seven, was a seven year old, was a 39 and two uh, on one side, 36 and three on the other and had 16 and four eighths uh, inch bases. So just big, massive mm -hmm. bases. Um, and that was the biggest ram killed in the state. Yeah, biggest ram uh, killed in the state. And, you know, historically, 24B South typically is always in the top, you know, one, two, three of biggest rams harvested in the state. If we go back to um, 2013, uh, you got a 182 and a 186. If you go to 2014, uh, you've got a 185 and a 174. You go to 2015. Uh, you've got a, a 181 and a 174. So the quality is here. Residents, definitely, if you've got max points, I would put this way towards the top of the list of something that you should be looking at.
Uh, yeah, I so, know the guy that had the tag last year, and he looked over a ton of sheep, including the one he killed before he made the decision to actually kill the ram that he killed. And the ram he killed is just a beautiful... I mean, they don't get any better as far as just overall. The ram has everything. He's got length. He's got mass. Um, just a tremendous sheep to uh, to harvest. By, I mean, incredible. Yeah, and one thing to note about the 24B South hunt is 24B South, you can hunt all of the wilderness. There is also a wilderness tag. Now, the person that has the 24B wilderness tag, which I believe we're going to talk about um, here shortly, um, they can only hunt in the wilderness where when you have 24B South, you can hunt the whole unit. Um, so, you know, being the only tag holder in there, it is definitely, you know, top one, two units year in and year out in the state of Arizona, high quality here. Yeah. Uh, hunt number 6018, uh, unit 28, there's two tags. Um, now this is south of, of uh, U.S. Highway 170. Uh, 28 is is ha, ha, has always been known as, as good quality um, in in Unit 28. And uh, last year uh, was a one in 156. So it was 156 first choice applicants. Uh, in 2014, there was 137. In 2015, there was 132. Now, keep in mind, they have added a tag. And so um, by, I'm just checking something here, Brian. Um, I don't see the numbers on the I don't see it list, either. I, I know that the hunter killed Ram in there last year was 166. Okay. Yeah, I, I think they just have a typo here. Um, and in years past, you know, historically, 28 uh, always, you know, produces a pretty good ram. In 13, that was a 159. Uh, in uh, 14, that was a 173. In 15, there was a 171 ram. Uh, with two tags, this is now open to non-residents. As a non-resident, I definitely think this needs to be on your radar. Um, I definitely think this unit is trending in the right direction. Um, it's over in the eastern part of the state, and um, the quality is here. Uh, and with the, uh, you know, one in 156 with two tags, let's say, yeah, some, some non-residents will now put in, but I'll bet you it's still going to be probably a one in a hundred uh, chance to draw but it also has high quality so um definitely something you know if you're looking for quality 28 is a good option yeah and no no one last year drew a tag for 28 south with max points so i mean that for whatever reason i mean i'm sure somebody had max points applied for it but it wasn't one of the ta one of the tags did not get pulled out in that max pool so that could change year to year but it's definitely something that hasn't gone in the max pool last year yeah i think that's huge to note there because you've got good quality and and it didn't go in the max pool it's not saying it won't this year but you, it's definitely you know it's one of those things you know you're saying there's a chance they're saying there's a chance that a not you know a max point holder is not going to apply for it i have a feeling with two tags in there it's going to be more on the radar this year uh because the quality's there i um, would agree next hunt 6019 uh 3132 uh that that's the aravipa canyon uh, there's three tags in there and, uh, mm -hmm. last year there were 859 first choice applicants. Uh, uh if you go back, to, they added a tag last year and the quality, um, 165, 157 and 173, they shot an eight an 11 and a nine year old Ram. So the quality is there. I think the Aravipa is definitely trending up. Uh, if you go to 2014 first choice applicants, uh, there were two tags available, 609 applicants. And in 2015, there were two tags available for five, 551 first choice applicants. So like a, uh, back then it was like a one in 250 or a one in 275. Uh, and, you know, pretty long odds here in 31, 32. Uh, but historically, if you go through... You know, I'm looking at 13, there's a 170 and a 151. 
I'm looking at 14, there's a 157, 158. In 2015, uh, there's a 170 and a 171. So definitely quality is here. Um, Aravipa Canyon is a real special place. Uh, it's It's got a lot of history. Uh, you've got, you know, Aravipa, and then you've got Redfield Canyon to the south, and then you've got some uh, areas there in, in Unit 31 as well. Um, really neat country. Uh, definitely, definitely, you know, quality is here for sure. And one thing to note for last year in 31, 32, uh, no one with Max drew the tag last year. Now, that is not the norm for that unit. But last year, all the tags went in the random. Nobody in the max pool drew that tag. Yeah, that that's important there. Um, I don't know if that will stay the same, but, uh, you know, it, it. the quality's there for sure. So, um, you know, definitely, definitely high on the quality chain. It's got three tags, so it's definitely something that a non-resident uh, can get one of those tags. Uh, let's jump to the next hunt, uh, 6020, 6021. That's 37A. Uh, new this year, they've split that. Uh, November 17th to December 7th is the first hunt, two tags. And December 8th through December 31st, uh, two tags as well. Uh, 37A last year, if you look at it, um, it, it had 715 applicants for two oh. tags. Uh, so that's roughly a one in 350. So long odds. Uh, but if you look at the quality uh, that was uh, shot, it's uh, a 10 year old 162 ram was harvested and a nine year old 170 ram was harvested. If I go back to 2013, uh, 153 and a 164. If I go to 2014, um, let me look here. Uh, 174 ram was killed. If I go to 2015, uh, a 153 and a 167 were harvested. Uh, this is the silver bells um, and really neat sheep country. They must have had a really good survey down there to double the amount of tags and split the hunts. Uh, this is also where that ram, I believe they call freckles. Um, the Game and Fish has got a, it's a piebald ram. Um, and uh, I remember seeing in the Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society newsletter um, that they had some pretty good success with their surveys. So I'm sure that's what the number of increase there with the plus two tags. Uh, definitely with with uh, two tags, a non-resident could draw each of there. And, and the quality is is definitely here. Yeah, I think the one thing that would be intriguing to me is if you're not a, a guy with Max, that second season hunt might give you an opportunity at a premium unit in a, with a premium tag. Just the second go around would be something to definitely look into there. Yeah, I think anytime, Brian, when you have a two hunt split, if you put in, especially if you know if you had max points and you put in for the second hunt, you I I I just got to think odds wise you 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 know you're you're going to have a pretty good chance. And even if you don't apply for that second hunt, I'll bet you there'll be a lot less people applying for the second hunt, you know. But you always wonder, too, if people play that game and it's really about even, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's you never know for sure. I just, I just think that, you know, in general, your max point guys are going to stay away from it, which gives you a chance. Yep. Next hunt is 6022. That's 37B. It's one tag. Um, that is right there by Superior, Arizona. That is just kind of east of the 24 units. Uh, that is uh, a, a relatively new uh, sheep unit. Uh, uh, I believe 2013 was the first year they had uh, hunts in there. Uh, if you look at the applicants there for 37B, uh, there's one tag, uh, 180 first choice applicants. In 2014, there was 119 first choice applicants. In 2015, there was 124 first choice applicants. Uh, the, uh, there's good quality in 37B. Uh, they, they shot a six year old 167 RAM uh, last year. Uh, in that first year, I believe it was open, was 2013. Uh, there was a 162 RAM harvested, a 171 RAM harvested in 14, 
and a 170 ram harvested in in 2015 that's kind of that picket post um, when you're driving from phoenix to superior on the right you see some jagged kind of cake you know birthday cake looking mountains um, some jagged rocks a lot of the sheep hang out right there and definitely as a resident uh, definitely if you live in the southeast valley um, you know the quality is here in 37b uh, definitely would be on my radar as a resident Okay, uh, next hunt uh, is uh, 39 East. There's one tag. Now, 39 East, historically um, not known for, for super high quality. Uh, 39 East, uh, number of applicants last year, uh, there were uh, a 1 in 70 chance. In 14, it was a 1 in 42. In 15, it was a 1 in 46. Uh, last year in 39 East, 171 inch ram uh, was harvested. I actually had a podcast listener uh, send me photos. Uh, uh, Paul Maduno, uh, 35 inch right horn, 33 inch left horn, but big bases, 15 and 6 inch in, in spacious. Uh, seven year old ram scored 171. Uh, historically, 39 East, uh, if you go to 13, was a 164. Uh, in in 15 was a 159. Uh, in in excuse me, 14 was a 159. Uh, a friend of mine, Craig Blackburn, shot a 156 eight-year-old in 15. Uh, definitely not the quality of 39 West, which we'll talk about in the next hunt. Uh, 39 West. Uh, this it has uh two tags, so it's available for a non-resident. Uh, two tags, and last year it, there was 170 uh, first choice applicants, so two tags for 170, uh, so that's what, one in 85. Uh, in 14, it was two tags, there were 212 applicants. In 2015, there were two tags for 200, 221 applicants for two tags. Uh, if you look at 39 West last year, uh, looks like 153 and 161 inch ram were harvested. If we jump back to 2013, a 157 and a 164 were harvested. In 2014, a 164 and 165. And in 15, a 162 and a 140. Um, now, I know over the years... Um, this this unit's been you know bow hunters kind of like this unit brian do you know any of the bow hunters that have hunted in 39 west i do not i mean oh i take that back i i believe that's where matt lowenquist killed i think his ramps number three or four in the state now um but that was several years ago and he's the only one i know i i think that has killed a ram out of 39 west um for sure so i don't know a whole bunch of guys that have hunted it um I don't know a lot about the unit other than kind of what you're going over. Okay. Uh, next hunt is 40A, number 6025. That's obviously the month of December. It's a two-tag hunt, uh, so it is open to non-residents. Uh, this this is a hunt that you should be aware. You could have some illegal problems, uh, Ill, you know, Ill, illegal aliens, um, you know, drug trafficking, drug running type of, of issues. Um, it is down and borders the Tohono Odom uh, Indian Reservation. Uh, it is uh, down there kind of south uh, and uh, west of Tucson. Uh, last year, uh, there were 280 applicants for two tags. Uh, the year before, in, or excuse me, in 14, it was a 1 in 60. Uh, and in 15, it was a two, 116 applicants for two tags. So... The reason that it jumped from 116 applicants to 280 applicants is uh, in 2015 in 40A, there were two, I believe, right at 180 rams. Uh, yeah, one seven, yeah, basically two 180 rams killed. And so you saw a huge increase uh, in, in the tag numbers. Historically, um, it, there wasn't a hunt, let's see, the uh, the first time it was hunted, uh, it, it shut down for a while. 2014, uh, Chris Harlow shot a one, uh, an eight-year-old that was 170 and an eighth. 
And then, like I said, in 2015, there were two uh, 180 Rams. I believe the uh, quality is here. Um, last year, if you look at the Rams that were harvested, it didn't reflect that. Uh, there was a 166 and a 143. Um, but I believe the quality is there. I think one of the challenges is those Rams come in and out uh, of, of the reservation. And um, I believe it also uh, borders Mexico down there, I believe, and they come in and out. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, but anyway, it's kind of a choppy unit, uh, not incredible glassing, um, but definitely there is an opportunity for a good ram, but it's an extremely tough hunt. Yeah, I think one of the things that should be mentioned on that is that in 2014 and 2015, those tag holders are well-known sheep hunters that know what they're doing and put their time in, and the size of the ram they killed are reflective of that. Um, well, and I think saw. they had time too. They had time on their side um, to really work it over right. and they had a good team. Both both sets of hunters had a good team. And um, so I think the quality is there. You just need to really, it's not for the faint of heart because it's not your typical, you know, big mountain where you can just glass. It's kind of choppy where you got to do a lot of hiking and, you know, go, you know, quite a bit and not see sheep. And I think there's a lot of sheep movement as well in and out of areas you can't hunt and what have you. Yep, I would definitely agree with you on that. Okay, next hunt is uh, 40B, uh, which now this is a four-tag unit. We're talking 40B Gila's, um, and uh, it it has four tags, and I believe last season, in two, or two seasons ago in 2015, uh, it, it only had two tags. And if you look at the amount of applicants uh, for 40B, um, I believe that was uh, 263 applicants uh, last year for the four tags, and the quality there in the uh, 40B Gila's, a 159, a 161, a 169, and a 143. Um, so definitely a decent quality, uh, and let's jump over here. Um, for whatever reason, I don't have it broke down here in 2013 um in 2014 there was a 158 and a 157 in 2015 there was a 161 and a 147 and uh in 15 like i said there was a 159 161 169 143 so not historically known for book rams although they did get a 169 and 6 eighths out of their last year um, definitely, you know, a decent draw odds, uh, especially with four tags, um, you know, definitely available for non-residents, potentially up to two tags. So as a non-resident, that's probably something that should be um, on your radar there. Brian, anything to add? That's what, a, a one in 60? One in yeah, I mean, I would definitely, it's definitely a, a, a unit to consider. Um, over the years that it's done okay. I mean, you definitely have a chance there to break into the to the Boone and Crockett, you know, over that minimum, but you really have a good shot to kill just a really nice sheep. Yeah, pretty sheep. Pretty good... They're pretty tight curled sheep from the ones that I've seen. They're kind of tight curled, um, not big open curl, um, but real pretty sheep for sure. Um, let's jump down to 6027, which is the 40B Mohawk Coppers. Uh, two tags. Uh, if you look at uh, the 40B, uh, I believe last year there were 95 first choice applicants, and uh, last year they harvested a, a let's see 135 and a 168. So another uh, book ram. This book ram was a nine year old, 34 uh, inch horns and 15 and two inch, 15 and two eighths inch bases. Uh, nine-year-old 168 ram uh, and for whatever reason I don't have my 40 B's broke down but I mean I think that's it's it's not real common to have um, big big rams there was a uh, 176 in the Tanaha Altas uh, which is what we'll talk about next uh, that was a uh, two tagged for 151 
uh, applicants for those two tags. And this year there is two tags in there as well. Um, like I said, they harvested a 176 uh, ram that was a nine-year-old that was 36 on one side, 37 on the other with 15 and a half inch bases uh, and a 155 ram. And that 176 ram definitely, um, I think when it got officially scored, I think it was closer to 180. I don't think it quite hit 180, um, but a pretty good ram that, it, it, you know, it seems like those rams still are kind of those tighter curled uh, rams. And if I go back, I'm looking at 2013, you know, there's kind of mid 150s, 160s. And let me flip the sheet here. Yeah, um, I, I think that's pretty standard indicative of that unit. You yeah, know that. A 159, mid. kind of kind of mid, you know, high 150s, low 160s. Uh, although they did get a great ram out of there last year. And and in 2015, uh, there was one tag in the Tanahas Altas uh, in 40B. And in 15, it was a 173 10-year-old. I mean, so so th there's definitely, it, it seems to be trending up a little bit. Um, although you wonder in 15 and 16, you know, a couple pretty good rams get harvested out of there. You know, what else is left? Uh you know, I, I kind of look at that sometimes when there's two or three years of, you know, pretty decent rams trending up, you know, did, you know, is there anything left in there or did they, you know, take the cream right off the top? Definitely, you have to be concerned about that. And so, it's, I mean, if you're a numbers person, you pay attention to kind of what the trend has been because those units don't produce a lot of big rams. So if they kill a couple of good ones in a season, that could be the upper echelon of what was there. Yeah, and I, w I want to make it clear, I have no uh, personal knowledge. I've never been in 40B. Uh, the the Gila's, the Mohawks, or the Tanahas Altas have never even been there. Um, just going off of, of the numbers. Next hunt is 6029. That's 41 East. Now, this is the Eagle Tails. This kind of used to be the crown jewel of, of Arizona. Uh, the, the, the unit kind of went through some some bad times. It's, it's seen a little bit of resurgence. Uh, there's there's two tags this year. Uh, if you look at the uh, applicants last year, it was um, two tags, 159 uh, applicants. Uh, so that's like a one in 80. If you look at 2014, there was one tag, 95 a uh, first choice applicants. Uh, if you look at uh, 2015, there was one tag and 101 people applied. Uh, 41 East. Uh, last year, according to my records, one person did not kill, and there was a 164 eight-year-old ram that was harvested. Uh, if you go back uh, in 2013, uh, there was a 171. Uh, if you look at 2014, there was a 155, and in 2015, there was a 148. Um, now, years ago, back, say, 05, 06, 04, 05, 06, kind of in that range. The Eagle Tails had a bunch of sheep, and uh, Garth Carter killed a big ram in there, and some other, you know, historically it's had some big rams. Um, 41 East is definitely one that I think is is possibly on an uptrend. Uh, it's definitely something that that uh, you might put on your radar. Um, I have very little experience. I've been I've only been in there. Uh, one day looking around for sheep. Um, it's pretty neat country. There is some wilderness stuff uh, there that you can get away and, and, and go, you know, put a backpack on. And it's not far from Phoenix. It is a two-tag uh, hunt, so it's also open to non-residents. Uh, next hunt, 6030, 41 West. Uh, 41 West, there's two tags. Uh, if you look at the applicants last year, there were two tags for 169, or 169 applicants for two tags. Uh, and uh, the year before that, it was a 1 in 43. And the year before that, it was a 1 in 32. Um, so obviously, by bumping 41 West last year to two tags, it looks like a bunch of non-residents piled in there, um, making it a, a, a 169 for or Two applicants uh, for, or excuse me, 169 applicants for two tags. Uh, they did shoot a really big ram, Clay Goldman. Um, actually, my taxidermist uh, from Payson, Mogion Taxidermy, 
uh, shot a ram. It says uh, 10 year old ram, 178 and 4 eighths. I had 38 on one side, 37 on the other with 14 and 3 eighths inch bases. Um, and uh, another big desert, Arizona desert bighorn sheep member, uh, Andy St. John, uh, harvested a 155 ram. And if you look at uh, 41 West in 2013, a 169, uh, in 14, a 148, in um, 15, a 164 nine year old was harvested. Um, I still think, uh, I talked to Clay, not a lot of sheep, um, pretty tough unit. He was very fortunate to get the ram he did. Um, I, I definitely don't know that it's trending up. Um, I think potentially there is a chance for a, you know, a book ram, um, but, but pretty tough, not a lot of sheep, uh, according to uh, what Clay was telling me. Next hunt, uh, 6031, uh, that's the month of December, 42 and 44A, uh, south of, of US 60. There's uh, one tag in there. Uh, if, you, if you look at the hunt uh, last year, there was uh, 150 applicants. Uh, the year before that, there was actually two tags, and it was two tags, 233 people applied. Uh, in 2015, there was two two tags with 240 people applying uh, and last year in that unit uh, a 165 six-year-old ram was harvested with looks like 15 inch bases 35 on one horn 32 on the other there was a couple years um brian uh, i believe uh dave acosta had it in yeah in 2013 who's a friend of yours harvested a one Looks like a 168 uh, eight-year-old, and in 2014 there was a 172 and a 173, and in uh, let's see last year in 42 and 44A uh, East there was no kill, and then in 42 alone on the tag there was a 168. Yeah, there was a couple things that happened in 42. I mean, the first year they had the tag, when Dave had his tag, you know, Dave killed a great ram, low 170s. And then the that next That was the year, first, first year there was a tag, if if, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was. It was the first year there was a tag, and he killed a low 170s ram. And then the next year, there were two hunters in there, and they killed two great rams in the 170s. But there was they also wounded a ram that was in the mid-70s. And I'm not sure that that ram survived. And then I believe they found a deadhead mid-70s ram on that hunt also. So that's one of those units that had some great potential. They kind of put a few, they put went to two tags, I believe, in there for two years in a row. And it kind of hurt that, especially when you have two rams in, or two hunters in there and they ended up shooting three rams because one of them got away from them. Um, so that's a unit that has potential, but basically since 2013 it, since it's been open it's had roughly five or six hunters in there and they've pretty much every ram they've killed has been a book ram uh last year's ram was 165 and 28 and then i don't think they killed there was one other hunter in there last year who did not kill but it was just one of those units that has fallen to circumstance um it's a great unit it has potential to come back but product of maybe a tag too many in there and then just un, you know misfortune of hitting and wounding a ram and not recovering it that possibly died and then a deadhead right. that, that's a unit that it definitely has potential but it's been hurt you know since it was open making yeah, it it's not as it might not be as good as what the number what the numbers on paper show is what you're saying i would say it's on a downhill trend yes yeah, I, I, that from what I've heard, that's the same thing. There still could be a, you know, a good ram in there, um, but definitely, you know, um, with a, with a few, you know, a handful of the rams dying, uh, getting killed, harvested, what have you. Um, there's, there's not like what there was two or three years ago. Next right. unit six six zero three two uh, forty three A. <clears throat> Excuse me. Forty-three A is on the western part of the state. It's um, west of Quartzsite. It, it, um, 
uh, it's west of Quartzsite. It's where the auction uh, ram, auction desert, it's where the famous uh, curly, if you will, uh, ram was harvested last year uh, by the auction hunter. Um, was fortunate to spend some time in there in 43A. Um, also was partnered with Arizona Desert Outfitters. Dar and I happened to be the guide on the auction desert uh, sheep tag last year. A, a friend of mine bought the permit and spent a bunch of money. Uh, wanted that particular ram and um, uh, we formed a partnership with Arizona Desert Outfitters and um, they did a good job of uh, keeping tabs on the ram and uh, um, the hunter ended up uh, harvesting the ram in December and um, he was a beauty. Uh, pretty neat for the state of Arizona to have a ram of that character with that much curl in his horn. Um, and uh, it was kind of all over the internet and a little bit of a mess um, publicly, uh, but uh, good for the state of Arizona for a ram like that to be harvested with a bow. Um, the Game and Fish uh, gr green scored him at 181 and 2 eighths. He actually ended up officially uh, 182 and 5 eighths. Um, not sure where he was scored, but the official score came up with a little bit higher score. Uh, he was a 13 year old ram, which was very impressive uh, and um, anybody seen the picture of you know a real curly horned ram basically a curl and a half that's him and uh, he was harvested in uh, unit 43a yeah that uh, ram was 40... harvested with with a bow too so i mean that's uh that ram at 182 and change official would put him at number two in the world uh in pope yeah. young yeah, I don't. I don't think the hunter's going to enter him. But if he did, he would be the new number two, which would is pretty cool because the state of Arizona already has number one with the Tony Loops Ram uh, Derringer Outfitters guiding Tony Loop on the auction tag the year before, and um, he he his Ram uh, that was a 2015 Ram uh, is the new uh, world record with a bow, and it would be pretty cool to have number one and number two. I'm not sure what the hunter's going to end up doing probably won't enter it but it is pretty neat to have that that ram harvested with a bow uh and it was a pretty neat experience to be able to see that ram alive and in person and get photos and and um, live video of them and and stuff just a really neat ram if you look at 43a on the surface um it's an interesting unit because there's only one tag last year there was 139 uh first choice applicants the year before uh, or in 2014, it was only 75, so it was a 1 in 75. And in 2015, it was a 1 in 79, and then it jumped up to a 1 in 39. I think a lot of people uh, obviously knew that Curly was in there. Uh, and the Hunter uh, last year, let's see, 43A, harvested a ram that was an 8-year-old that was 164. Uh, 14 and 2 inch bases, 31 and 33 inch horns. Um, if I look at my charts here for uh, 43A, actually in, in 2013, a, a, a really big ram was harvested um, that scored 181 and 5 eighths. And interesting with the whole auction tag and the story is I actually got pictures, um, Game and Fish had pictures from the helicopter of this 181 ram and Curly. Uh, back in October of 2013, before um, this gentleman in 2013 harvested the ram. And so Curly, obviously being 13 years old last year when he was harvested, um, pretty neat how he, how he was able to keep himself alive. Uh, if you go to 2014, uh, there was a 165 harvested. And in 2015, there was a 172 nine-year-old. You know, for a one tag unit, um, you know, I think that 165 to 170 range, you know, is potentially doable. Um, it's a it's a pretty big unit from top to bottom. Um, there's a lot of places and there's a reservation there as well where the sheep can move on and off. And so you have to be aware of that. But um, the unit actually uh, encompasses both sides of, of I-10 freeway. So there's, you know, a portion there on the north side of I-10 and a portion there on the south um, definitely as a one tag unit, um, something to be on the radar. I don't think there's any more, uh, I'll be honest. I don't think there's any more big giant Rams like, uh, the one that was shot in 13 or like Curly last year. Um, 
but definitely I think it's a unit that, you know, 165 type of RAM uh, to, you know, maybe maybe a book RAM uh, potential there. Uh, yeah, that RAM went to, or that unit went, 43A was a max pool tag. The one, the 100 that drew it was max pool tag, but a lot of that hype was because just about everybody in the know knew that Curly was there, and so where people were hoping to to get a crack at him uh, and draw that tag. So you, I think that's why you say, saw the applicant jump too. Yeah, it may stay as a max pool tag, but I don't think it's going to, uh, unless someone thinks that there's something else great in in that unit. But uh, there's definitely some good cheap in there. It's definitely you know where you can kill. One, a mid 60s to a low 70s RAM, I think, is still feasible, um, but you're going to have to work at it. Yep. Next unit is 6033 uh, 43B. Now, interesting, 43B used to be seven tags uh, in 2016, and this year it's dropped back down to uh, uh, five tags. Uh, if you look at the number of applicants in uh, 43B, there were 1,318. Uh, applicants for seven tags in 2014 there were seven 743 uh, in 2015 there were seven tags and there were 682 so there's a huge increase um, from from 2014 and 15 to 2016 almost double the amount of applicants in 43b now they have actually reined that back to a minus two so there's only five tags in 43b if you look at the quality um, that was harvested there last year, uh, there was a 152, a 161, a 157, a 169, and a 156, a 145, and a 167. And it looks like they range from six to nine years old. And then if I go back to my historic charts and look at 2013, uh, they're in 43B. You have RAMs ranging from 167, 140, 161, 155, 158. Um, and let's see, in 2014, in 43B, 159, 164, 162, 153, 161, 160, 159. In 2015, 166, 179, a really good RAM was shot in, in 2015, 179 RAM, uh, 156, another 175, uh, Dean Roby's RAM in, in 175, and then several 158 RAMs. I, I've never been in 43B. I hear lots of good things about it. Obviously, there's a lot of sheep. Um, when the Game and Fish takes it from 7 to 5, I would tell you that, that that's an obvious, that the Class 3 and 4 RAMs, they're trending down. Uh, so keep that in mind. There's still probably a good one or two in there. Um, but when they drop the tags by two, it's it's on a downward trend. Still with five tags, that gives an opportunity for a non-resident to potentially uh, draw up the two tags in there. So definitely as a non-resident, it should be on your radar. Yeah, the one thing I would say about 43B is I think your uh, dramatic increase in applicants from 2015 to I'm from 2015 is I, I think a lot of the people, including non-residents who were putting in for 15B may have switched over to 43B because 43B is a Great good point. unit. Um, Great point. It has produced some good RAMs. Uh, this is all, this unit's all about what you're going to put into it. It's a big unit with a lot of country. And if you're going to work hard at it and, and spend the time needed, you can kill a book RAM in here. Um, but remember, Killing seven sheep out of one unit multiple years in a row is a lot of sheep coming out of a unit. But there's a lot of country in there. It gives you a lot of opportunity. I know last year a bow hunter killed a ram in there. The year before that a bow hunter killed a ram in there. So it is a bow hunter friendly unit. But I do believe that a lot of non-residents have jumped from 15D to 43D because of the pneumonia outbreak and the concern there. Uh, one other thing I would mention is Last year, there were no tags that went to uh, 43B in the max pool draw. So none of the max pool tags went to a hunter in 43B. So it gives you a chance to draw that tag, but you're competing against a lot of people because they, uh, you know, there's there's potential to kill a book ram there. I mean, they've done it almost every year for the last three or four years. 
but it really comes down to what quality a hunter draws the tag and how much effort they're going to put in uh, when they get the tag. For sure. Brian, I want to take a second here and thank the sponsors of this podcast. I want to thank my title sponsor, GoHunt.com Insider. Uh, Lorenzo Sartini and his crew do such a great job over there with their insider program and uh, breaking down each state and draw odds with all the different species. Uh, it's, a, it's an incredible resource there at Go Hunt Insider, as well as all the hunt giveaways uh, and all the uh, state strategy articles of uh, when, where, and how to draw tags. Uh, if you're not already an insider member, you can use the, you can go to gohunt.com insider. You can click on the blue join now button, use the J Scott promo code, and you're going to get a $50 Kuyu gift card uh, sent to you uh, automatically uh, just for signing up. That also makes you eligible for uh, every month. They're giving away great gear and great um, hunts. Uh, they've given away doll sheep hunts and antelope hunts and uh, mule deer hunts, uh, great gear, rifles, backpacks, uh, etc. Um, make sure to use the J. Scott promo code. Also, Kuyu.com, Jason Harrison. Uh, Dar and I have been wearing Kuyu gear uh, since 2010 when Jason started the company. And uh, I know, Brian, you wear uh, a lot of Kuyu gear, and uh, it's, it's definitely something that goes on all of our hunts. I want to thank Jason over at Kuyu.com for his sponsorship. And also uh, the outdoorsmans.com, 1-800-291-8065. Cody Nelson there in Phoenix, the optics authority. Uh, Cody and his crew do such a great job of informing and helping the customers, uh, figuring out the best optics. And they sell backpacks and tripods and, and great glassing accessories uh, over there. And then Cheston Davis in Beaver, Utah, phonescope.com. Uh, uh, phone scope. If you use the J Scott promo code, uh, you get a 10% discount. Uh, I will add that uh, phone scope makes great digiscoping. So you can take any optic with any phone and be able to take photos and video. If you use the J Scott promo code, you're going to get a 10% uh, discount there at uh, phone scope. Also, I forgot to say, if you use the J Scott promo code at the outdoorsman, you get a 10% discount. Um, Brian, that leads us to the next hunt. Uh, which is uh, 44A East. Uh, that is a two-tag unit. Uh, last year, uh, there it was a one-tag unit. 57 people applied the year before. Or in 14, there was 46 people applied for one tag, and in 2015, 52 people applied for one tag. So if you look at these numbers, they just added a tag. Only 57 people applied there last year. Uh, the bells are going off in my head that if you're just looking to draw a tag, this is, you know, under a 1 in 30 chance if the applicants stay the same, which it will probably go up because now there's a non-resident tag, but still it's probably going to be a 1 in 35, maybe a 1 in 40 chance. Um, I'm a little fearful for the quality in 44A East. Um, they did kill, I believe in 2010, 100, a low kind of mid 180s, beautiful ram. Uh, in there, but there has not been uh, much since then. I would say that probably because of the tag ad there, you know, a plus one, uh, maybe they're getting a little bit more information on their surveys. Last year, the hunter shot an eight-year-old 161 uh, ram, and if I go back uh, on my charts here, in 13, uh, there was a, a 159 in 14, uh, there was a 156, and in 15 there was a 149. So since that big ram's been killed in there, that you know it hasn't been super high quality. But this might be an opportunity for those that are really looking for the draw odds. Um, definitely one to look at here. Yeah, that's going to be a difficult hunt. I mean, the hunter that had the tag last year is I know him personally, and he's he got after it hard. To kill the biggest ram he could possibly get after and uh you know i mean i know that killing a 161 ram that he killed he worked his tail off to do that and was ecstatic to do that so just understand what you're getting into it's not an easy hunt it's not a hunt for the faint of heart and uh you know you're probably not going to kill a book ram but you could turn something up like that but i think realistically mid 50s low 60s is probably pretty realistic yep uh, next hunt, uh, 6035, uh, a unit that I really, really like. Um, 
They've really pounded the tags through there and the quality's come down, but that's 44B North. That's north of I-10. Um, there's three tags in there this year. If you look at the numbers last year, uh, there were f uh, there were four uh, four tags last year. 1,070 people applied. Uh, in 2014, there were two tags, 603 people applied. Uh, in 2015, there were four tags, 1,108 uh, people applied. I have guided in that unit several years. Uh, Glenn Hall back in 2009 shot a really nice mid-170s RAM, and then Avery Elms uh, back a few years ago, uh, I believe a 12-year-old girl uh, hunted with me, and, and well, I know she hunted with me, but she's a 12-year-old girl, and had a great hunt with her and her dad and it was kind of heartbreak there was a big ram in there that we knew about um avery couldn't come hunt till i believe the 18th of december and the big ram was already harvested um but since then they've you know had four tags in there and pounded the quality pretty good um i, I was happy to see them go uh with with back to three tags i wish they'd take it to two um it, it's a very easy unit to get around uh, if you look at the ta uh, hunters in there last year, uh, they harvested a, uh, let's see, a one, they harvested a 169, a 166, and a 154 uh, ram. And a 150. And, and, and a 150 ram, that's right. Uh, but historically, you know, it's had rams uh, in the, you know, 165 to 175 uh, range there for a few years. You know, everybody was shooting a book ram in the unit. And for years, you know, a handful of years, it was always going in the max pool. How did that unit fall in the max pool last year, Brian? Uh, only one tag was drawn in the max pool out of the four, which is a pretty unusual trend for that unit. But I think what you're seeing is, you know, they went from two permits to four permits. The quality has definitely uh, suffered and declined. And I, I would venture to say that your guys with Max are kind of steering away from it unless they're just physically looking for an easier hunt. And I, I think their reasonable expectation is a low 60s RAM with occasional RAM getting in that upper 60s, maybe low 70s. But it's just too many, killing too many bigger RAMs in there. And it's, it's hard for that unit to sustain that, um, you know, that amount of tags and that amount of big rams being killed because the reality is you can get around in that unit pretty easy and it's pretty lastable. There's no place really for them to hide. Um, that unit's probably one of the most accessible and it's very, very fun to hunt because you can cover all the unit on a ranger up and down and there's really not, yeah, there's some rough country, but you know, if, if you spend a few days in there, you can pretty much see everything that's there. Certainly over time, it, it's, if you get, you know, two, three, four hunters in there, um, you know, you can whack them out pretty good. That's the Plumosa Mountains. That's um, over there uh, west, excuse me, east of Quartzsite. Uh, it's kind of uh, just kind of east of Brenda, Arizona, and uh, was for many years a unit that I really, really liked. And um, I think the Game of Fish did a good job in that we need to harvest those rams because just like the pneumonia outbreak, you know, a bunch of rams got killed and no, you know, they just died and they're laying out there, you know, so it's a double-edged sword. I want to see the quality stay high, but you also have to harvest some of those rams so people get a chance to get their desert ram and you'd hate to see something come in and wipe them out and the hunters not even get a chance to, to harvest them. So uh, bittersweet. Uh, next hunt is um 44b south which is hunt number 6036 there's two tags in there um that is a unit that for years was uh one of the better units in western arizona uh kind of like 41 east it's kind of over the last few years seen a little bit of a resurgence uh uh, 44 uh, b south uh, last year there were 292 applicants with two tags uh and in 2014, there was only 53 applicants, uh, first choice applicants. And in 2015, there was two tags, 250 applicants. So one in 25, uh, excuse me, one in 125. Uh, last year, they had good quality uh, rams, uh, were shot a 170 and a 178. Um, and that, that's the new water mountains that is south of I-10. It's, uh, east of, uh, 
uh, Quartzsite, it would be south of uh, 44B North. Uh, pretty good access uh, to get around uh, there in the unit. And historically, um, if I'm looking at my charts here, uh, back in 13, there was a 157. A 175 was harvested in 14, and that's what it kind of really jumped on the map there, people's radar. Uh, and then in 2015, there was a 174 ram uh, harvested. Uh, so definitely there's there's quality here uh, with two tags. It is open to a non-resident. Uh, I think it's a unit that should be on a non-resident's radar. Um, pretty easy getting around. Uh, a fair amount of sheep and I, I think it's a little bit on the rebound like I said uh, kind of like a 41 East um, definitely has the opportunity you know last year they killed a couple whoppers a 170 and a 178 so yeah cool. uh, good stuff that 44 B South just to mention last year um, both tags went to Matt in the max pool I suspect that'll be the same this year um, that unit has continually been producing the 170 rams and i don't think you're going to see people avoid that uh this year so i i would not be surprised if one or both tags go in the max pool in 44b south yep next hunt is uh 6037 45a there's four tags uh so this is a unit that obviously goes to non-residents it's also a unit with four tags that potentially could could have two non two non-residents draw the tag uh, in, in 45A, uh, last year there were um, 285 applicants for uh, three permits, so they've added one tag here. Um, so you're looking at four tags. Uh, so rough math, you know, a one in 70, one in 75 is probably what your odds are going to be. Uh, maybe a little bit more because they've added a tag and potentially get a little bit more. I hear that 45A is clicking along and, and maybe on an uptrend. Um, and 45A last year, they harvested a 174 ram out of there that was 11 year old ram, uh, 35 inch horns, 15 and 2 in, in, 15 and 2 8 inch bases, a 144 and a 162. Uh, and you know this is this is the Kofas uh, 45A, B and C. Um, you know, this, this is where the history of Arizona desert bighorn sheep hunting comes from. Uh, definitely, I think 45A should be on people's radar. And obviously with that, you know, 174 ram coming out of there, um, I think it's going to be on people's radar. Yeah, I think 45, the 45A, B, and C are kind of a success story for Game of Fish because the last five years, it's been pretty rough in there. Um, you know, it went from in 96, I had it 97. I had the tag in 45 C and there were, you know, three or four or five tags in each unit. It was real, real positive, real good hunt. And then it went just basically hit rock bottom maybe five years ago. And you see a steady increase in quality of Rams and, you know, it's a pretty good success story for game and fish. Cause I think they went in there and really handled the predator control and they've got these sheep coming back and i mean to see a 174 ram killed in 45a last year is pretty awesome uh, the year i had the tag in 97 in 45c i know there was a 180 ram killed um in 45a so i mean it, it's got the genetics and now it sounds like it's got some you know they're, they're dealing with the the online issues and the predator control issues and so i think this unit's on the uphill trend for sure uh, I'm a little concerned with four tags so fast because, I mean, they can only produce so many big rams, but at the same time, we're dealing with trying to provide people with an opportunity to hunt sheep. And so 45A is definitely a unit to be on the radar for uh, anyone who does not have max, including non-residents. And if you're a max guy, you maybe look at it too, but it's definitely something that should be on your radar if you're not in the max pool. Yeah, and I think that goes the same with 45B and C as well. Um... Brian, you shot your ram in what unit? I shot my ram in 45C in 97. Uh, my ram was like okay. 157 ram at the time. I was only 16 years old. So it was a, I tore off a little bit more than I could chew at the time, but uh, it was a great experience. Had a lot of fun. Uh, my dad killed a 175 in 45B back in 75, I believe it was. 
uh, back when those units were in their prime. But, uh, you know, 45B, which is, uh, I think, hunt number 6038 this year, has the one tag. So, obviously, it's kind of off limits to non-residents, but it's available to our residents. They kill a 9-year-old 165 in there. Which is no, it actually has two tags. Um, oh. All of the COFAs, it's 45A has four, 45B has two, and 45C has two as well, bud. Okay. So, yeah, 45B has the two tags. So, it's available to everybody again. It's definitely something that should be looked at. Um, I haven't hunted 45B myself, but I do know that those rams spend a lot of time on the border of 45A. And so, you kind of have to catch them when they're crossing over. But a nine year old 165 in there last year, that, I mean, that gives you definitely something positive to think about because you're only a couple inches away from Boone and Crockett minimum. And a 165 ram, let's be honest, is a beautiful sheep. Um, the year before that, in 2015, I believe they killed a 155 that was nine years old, and then they had a hunter that looks like did not kill in 45B. So, uh, you know... And then look at 45C. Um, you scored that Tim Melton ram, I believe, and it, um, you scored that ram. It, it game and fished at 171, and you know 35 on one side, 36 on the other, with you know 14 and 7, 15 inch bases. Um, you scored that ram, didn't you? The 45C ram. Yeah, I green scored that ram, and I think he official just slightly bigger than that, at like 172 potentially, 172 and a half. But Tim's a great dude, and I mean he he put his work in down there and found that gem in 45C, and, uh, you know, I think those units, I think all three of those units are coming back. 45C is a little more remote than A A and B is as far as accessibility and getting around because you've got to deal with uh, the Yuma Proving Grounds in the southern half of that unit, which they're accessible by foot, but you can't drive into most of that stuff. Um, And pretty limited road access in 45C, but, yeah, Tim's Ram was, incredible i mean just a beautiful sheep not you couldn't ask picture for a perfect ram yeah, yeah. you yeah. couldn't ask picture for a perfect ram. ram it was it was incredible yeah. so i think those units are on their on the uptick they're definitely something to be looked at uh if you're not in the max points and you're looking for a ram you know in that mid 60s range and you like the the mexicana or mexicali whatever however you want to say it the style of ram i think you need to look at those units and uh kind of do your homework i would say that those units are going to be difficult to bow hunt i would say 46a is probably your most reasonable or i'm sorry 45a is your most reasonable one to bow hunt 45c could be pretty difficult to sheep or spread out but uh i think as you know with the tag numbers that they have in there and if you're not in the max pool it's definitely definitely something you should be looking at for sure um let's let's jump to um hunt number uh 6015 which is the superstition wilderness uh the wilderness hunt in 24b um and they have this listed down here in the following hunts are extremely challenging areas with difficult access be prepared for backcountry camping and excessive strenuous hiking no there's no vehicle vehicular access to much of the bighorn sheep habitat in this unit um if if you look at a 24b wilderness last year there was 178 inch nine-year-old ram 16 inch 16 inch bases 36 inch horns uh beautiful ram killed uh if you look at the uh numbers of applicants there was uh 236 people uh for one tag it's obviously for non-resident or excuse me residents only uh, in 14, there was a one in one, or excuse me, 140 applicants for one tag, and in 2015, there was 222 applicants uh, for one tag. But the quality is here. Um, this is definitely uh, a high-quality unit. Um, there's been multiple rams shot, you know, say from 175 to 180, uh, year after year after year. Um, now you will have to share this unit with 24B South Hunter potentially. Um, this hunter is the 24B wilderness. You have to stay in the wilderness area and that know that the 24B south hunter can come into the wilderness. So you can have someone else in there with you. Uh, and if you draw this tag, you have to stay in the wilderness. But the, the qualities here, the bases are big. Um, it borders, obviously, unit uh, 
24B South, 24B North, um, and right there by Unit 22. Uh, so for residents, this is definitely for quality, definitely high on the radar, uh, tough odds, but uh, definitely one to look at. Uh, next hunt is 6040, uh, 46A East, um, and 46A East is, uh, this has been split into, um, or excuse me, last year was the first year they split it into two and two. And let's just talk about 46A East. Last year they killed a 173 and a 171 on the east side. On the west side, uh, 46A West, uh, they killed a 176 and a 167. Those are all eight and nine year, nine year old rams. Uh, this is definitely uh, a unit that you've got to watch out for illegals. Um, Brian, you know a little bit about this unit. You've known some of the hunters in there. Um, it's it's not easy hunting. Uh, you've got definitely some illegal, uh, uh, you know, act, activity, potential drug running, you know, all of those things that go with that. Uh, but historically, over the years, some giant rams have been shot out of 46A. It's not easy hunting, though. Yeah, I think the biggest thing I know, I know guys that have had the 46A East tag the last two years and one that had the 46A West tag in the last three years. And I think if you look at the numbers over the last couple of years, which I think it'd be, we'll go over here in a second. Last year was an abnormally ex exceptional year in 40, in both 46A East and 46A West. So I would just caution you know what you're getting into. This is a unit where you're going to, you're going to hike four to five miles to get to the base of the mountains where the sheep are at to start your day. And then you're going to, right. you're going to log 10 to 15 miles a day, you know, around those mountains. Now, typically you're hiking across the flat, so it's not up and down. It's just long distance. And you will be dealing with, um, you know, undocumented citizens crossing back and forth across the border. And you'll be dealing with a lot of border patrol here and there, which is it, it kind of, good because they kind of keep an eye on your stuff and they'll help you out if you're in, a, in a pinch but you will be dealing with a lot of traffic coming through there and that it's not necessarily your citizens uh, undocumented citizens who are coming here to basically work it's more of your drug traffic that's coming across there yeah so a lot of a lot of trucks get broken into uh, they say to leave food and water outside your camp so they don't come and ransack your camp i mean literally leave leave, leave coolers open with water and you know food and what have you so they they help themselves um you know i've heard over the years of guys getting held up you know there's all kinds of stories so just keep that in mind and if you can't walk you have no business applying for these units um at all uh, but if you look at the numbers last year, the first choice applicants, there were two tags, 99 in, in East, uh, uh, 64 applicants uh, for the 46A West. So, I mean, that's that's two, that's a one in 32 chance. So your odds wise, it's pretty dang good with high quality, but you've got some other issues that you're going to be dealing with on these, on these, on this hunt for sure. And let's just go over the numbers. So 46A East in 2015, you had a 168 and a 160. Uh, 46A West was a 151 and a 154. And then going to 2014, you're 46. It was just 46A, so it was not split. Um, you had a 171 and a 140. And then if you go back to 2013, you ended up, uh, there was a 171 and 162. So, I mean, the potential to kill a book gram is absolutely there, but you really just understand what you're getting into. If you're physically not in great shape and you physically can't walk, do not put in for these units. But if you're willing to go in and deal with the backpack style hunt and deal with, you know, uh, some illegal traffic here and there and the potential of someone breaking into your stuff because you want to kill a big ram, then you should definitely consider it. For sure. Well said. Um, for the sake of time, let's move on to 46B, the Cabeza Prieta. Uh, let's talk about um, hunt number uh, 6042, 46B East. And we will talk about 6043 46B West. 
Uh, and if you look at last year, uh, there were, uh, uh, let's see, there's the same tag, so four and four. Uh, 46 B East, last year there were 165 first choice applicants uh, in East. And in 46 B West, there were four tags, uh, 333. So twice as many people put in for B West as they did for uh, 46 B East. Uh, and if you look at uh, what was killed, uh, 46 B East, a 156, a 152, a 158, and a 171. And 46 B West was a 134, a 155, a 151, and a 164. So it's actually interesting that the, the, the odds of drawing were twice as bad in 46 B East, and they actually killed better Rams in 46 B East than they did in 46 B West. Um, sometimes that has to do with the, you know, the hunters there. Sometimes it has to do with the amount of time that they spend. Um, Brian, you have been down on the Cabeza Prieta, um, and so you have experience. I do not there, uh, but it, it, again, is another one of these units that's pretty good odds, but you have to be able to walk. You have to be able to hire a guide. Our friend Greg Coons does a lot of guiding there and, and does a lot of horseback. It's on the Cabeza Prieta. Um, and uh, you've got to get special permits and stuff if, if you're going to be bringing livestock down there. Uh, Brian, why don't you speak about these units? So I've hunted 46B. Uh, I've hunted the east and west side in 2014 with a good friend of mine, Matt Cutlip, and he killed a 176 ram, which was, I think it's the biggest ram that was killed in the unit in, in about 20 or 25 years. Now, we, we hunted our tails off, and let's just talk about 46B east first. A, who, the 171 Ram killed in there last year, that guy, that's incredible. I mean, that's a great Ram for that unit. We, I spent the first three days of our hunt down there with Matt in 46 B East, and I think we saw maybe six or seven sheep, and it was it was tough. We were logging 15 miles a day, you know, busting our tail trying to find sheep, and I, I think reasonably you can expect a mid-50s Ram maybe a low 60s 170 is reaching for the stars and it happened and congrats to the hunter last year who did that that's incredible i know in 2015 uh dylan curry's dad had the tag and they killed a 165 which is tremendous i mean that those are great rams for that unit that is a tough hunt it is not for the faint of heart and you better be able to walk um you may experience some um illegal traffic in 46B East and 46B West. We were there for roughly seven or eight days and did not have an issue at all. Uh, I never personally saw any um, illegals. I did see a lot of Border Patrol. Uh, generally, it's not as busy with that kind of traffic as 46A is. Uh, 46B West is obviously the western side of that unit. Great, great unit for mid 50s low 60s sheep uh you can drum up a giant a uh, good friend of mine russ richardson had the tag last year and killed actually the biggest ram to come out of the unit uh based on the numbers i'm looking at with his bow he killed a 164 and 4 8 ram with a bow and i mean if for those of you who know russ he's a stud um getting after it and killing a ram like that with your bows in that unit is definitely a, a feat to be had i think he's only the second bow hunter to kill a ram and in the 46s with his bow. Uh, in 2015, in 46B West, you you basically had a one, you had a 172, which I believe was killed uh, with our buddy Greg Coons in his outfit, and then you had a 157, a 145, and a 154. Again, your norm, your standard rams in those units are going to be 155 to 160. Um, if you're going to put in for these tags, plan a lot of time to be in the unit and try to coordinate having a good team with you because it's going to take some time. It's going to take, you know, days to find the Ram you want to find and it can be done, but if you don't have the time to take off from work or the time to spend down there hunting, I would urge you to steer away from those units until you have time to put the effort in that's required to be successful in those units. Very good, Brian. Good breakdown um, for sure. Definitely, um, Cabeza Prieta. You better better have your boots broken, and you 
better be prepared. I mean, Brian, you guys were walking four, five, six miles just to get across the flats to the mountain where the sheep were, correct? Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, it's flat walking. So, I mean, for the most part, you're walking across the desert floor and glassing up into the mountains so you're not hiking up into the mountains until you, until you uh, make the decision to go after a ram. Um, I would, if, if you're thinking about putting it for one of those units you, and you know, you have the ability to hire someone or look at hiring someone, you know, Greg Coons has a great operation with the horses to get you in there and get you into the heart of that country. I mean, he's got all the logistics taken care of for you there. Um, if you're a guy looking to draw a sheep tag and you got max points, you know, nobody else is probably going to put in for that unit with max points. It hasn't been a max point pick for a while and you could potentially get a chance to draw on that tag, but you need to make the arrangements in advance. It requires different types of permits to be down there. Um, it can be a rewarding hunt, but you're going to go, you know, you may go a day without seeing sheep. You may go a couple days without seeing rams. You know, you've got to put the work in. For sure. Um, buddy, I think that concludes our deserts. Um, let's hop over and talk about Rocky Mountain bighorns. Um, and certainly we've talked about, um, uh, let, let's talk about first, uh, we're going to skip the Black River hunt first, and we're just going to talk about 6A and 22 North. Uh, there's two hunts. It's November 17th through December 7th and December 8th through the December 31st. You and I would both agree that we love that hunt. Both you and I do. There's a lot of sheep. There's a lot of rams. Country's pretty accessible, although it's extremely rough once you get into some of the places. But, you know, getting around and, and looking at a lot of sheep, it's, it's definitely a, a fun unit. Um, you and I would love to um, be in that unit every year. Um, and obviously last year, you know, with Randy's awesome Ram, uh, you know, the new state record archery that was, you know, 182, Randy's Ram was a 183 and two eights, uh, 175 and a 170. Um, so the, you know, really good quality here in 6A and 22. Uh, most of the Rams that are killed are killed in 6A. Every once in a while, someone will venture down into 22 and kill a Ram. Um, I, I, I just... It's, it's such a fun hunt. I enjoyed going with you. I know Dar enjoyed guiding in there, and I know you were, you know, had a ball in there last year as well. Um, do you have anything else to add there in, in uh, 6A? Um, just last year, both all four tags for both hunts went in the max, uh, max pool draw. It's an incredible, it's incredible sheep hunt, probably one of the most fun sheep hunts that you can ever possibly experience. And I still think that, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to kill a mid seventies Ram in the unit. Um, it's got a lot of good up and comers. I just think it's going to be very difficult to break above that mid 80 range, um, with four tags in there. It, it has been, we've come close to it multiple times. Uh, since 2012, it's produced a 180 Ram every year. Um, and I think it will continue to do that, but, uh, it by far, in my opinion, one of the most, fun sheep hunts you can ever experience the rams are pretty visible um it's a great bow hunt um and with a rifle i think it's just a matter of finding the ram you want to find and uh spending time to get in there and kill him but um there's not much more i can say about it it's an incredible incredible hunt and anyone who has it is going to be call us <laughs> yeah call us <laughs> We will have a will work for food uh, sign out on the side of the road. Um, no, we love that 6A22 hunt for sure. And um, it's it's if there is such a thing as a country club a hunt, and the reason I say that is just because you see so many sheep and there's you can bounce around and hit different points and you know you we're pretty dialed in on on the unit and and um, we love it and have a lot of experience up there. So. Um, Brian, let's jump back to 6051, which is November 1st through the November 30th, the Black River Hunt Area 1 and 27. I want to note that last year um, they shot a whopper, uh, 41 by you know 41 inch horns, 16 and 6 eighths inch bases, and uh, scored 190 and 4 eighths. It was only a seven year old ram, just a whopper, just a big, big ram. You saw a picture of it, um, a big stinking ram for sure, and. Um, uh, you know, last year there was there's only one tag, and there was 180 applicants for that tag. But um, he made the most of it and shot a shot a giant ram. I don't know much about the hunt. 
Um, do you know anything, Brian? I don't know anything about the hunt, but that ram's a freak. And I mean, looking at <laughs> looking at the the harvest measurements from Game of Fish, it shows that ram has 116, almost 117 inches of mass, which is that's that's ridiculous. Um, you know, that ram had yeah. 40, uh, 41 and seven eighths inch horn on one side, 41 and five eighths inch horn on the other side. I mean, that that ram's a freak in nature. Um, I don't know what else is in there. I, I, I just don't have much experience with it. So, I mean, I don't know if all the other rams are dinks in there and if you could expect to kill another, you know, 180 type sheep. Yeah. Hunt number 6054, 23 and 24A. There's one tag. Obviously, it's not available to non-residents. Uh, last year, there was 138 inch, but that was a one-horned ram. Um, eight, eight year old one horn ram that was uh, 37 and five on one side, 14 and a half inch bases, but he had a one horn ram was only 25 inches. Um, and, uh, you know, there have been a few good rams, uh, I believe the guy before the year before that shot like a 170, low 170s ram. Um, and there was rumor that there was a bigger ram. I think you had heard some rumor that there was a bigger ram in there, but, um, he might not have made it. Um, and, yeah, uh, there was a, a good ram in there that may have. I know that uh, last year a ram got wounded in there and, and wasn't recovered. I was told that the ram uh, was believed to have been sur- uh, believed to have survived, but I don't know that. And just note that that 138 on that ram killed in there last year is not indicative of how big that ram is. I mean, if you add basically the other stat, you know, that ram's missing. 12 inches of mass or 12 inches of uh, horn on that one side. And so that really, really impacts everything when it comes down to the mass measurements and everything. So reality is it's probably like a 176 to 178 type sheep um, that he killed. It was just, you know, busted up on that one side. Yep. And then we've got the lower blue, uh, which is the whole month of December, which is one tag. So it's not available to non-residents. And you've got the upper blue, uh, which is November 17th to December 7th and December 8th to December 31st. There's two tags on each of those hunts. One thing that note, um, uh, the, the Rockies, it's this, all of the Rocky hunts are pretty much right during the rut. And so they're very, very ruddy, um, really actively chasing ewes. You know, typically the last two weeks of November, they're really getting after it. Um, but m- most everyone that hunts on these uh, rocky hunts should expect to see some rutting activity for sure. Uh, on those uh, t- 27 uh, north hunts, I uh, basically had a 187, a 164, a 174, a 164, a 174. Uh, and then you drop down into 27 and 28. You've got a you know 162, a 174, a 171, a 167, and a 162. Um, I don't know much about. I've never been over in those 27, 28 units. So I really don't have anything to add there. Yeah, I think the 20. I know two uh, two guys that had the 27 North tag last year. They both hunted with Ron Eichelberger. Um, you know, and one killed a 164, one killed a 174. I know a lot of that country is really, really remote, and they use horses to access it. I know the guy who killed a 187. Um, is a stud. He got in there and got into some country that was really, really tough to, to navigate and killed just a giant sheep. I and mean, that's not the norm. I think you can reasonably expect a 170 type class, a 170 class ram out of the 27 North hunt. Definitely not going to be an easy, easily accessible hunt. So if you're not in good shape, then you might need to look at getting horses or something of that nature to help you out. I've been on the 27 South 28 North hunt before. A lot of sheep to look at, a lot of country to look at. Hard to find that ram that'll break the 180 mark. But a great bow hunter friendly unit, uh, in my opinion. I know uh, one of the hunters last year killed a ram with a bow to complete his grand slam, which is pretty awesome. And um, just a lot of sheep on that 27 South, 28 North hunt, but it's tough to find a ram. It's going to go much over 175. I be, the two biggest rams killed in there last year were 174 and 171, and I'm pretty sure those are the two rams that were guided by Sam Derringer and Brett Bunker in there. A um, couple of the guys that we know that are pretty pretty good at what they do on that eastern part of the state. So um, I I just think I think that that 27 South 28 North Hunt is a good 
hunt if someone without max points is looking to draw. Last year, there was only one tag issued in the max pool, and that for that hunt, none of the 27 north tags went to max draw point holders, and then the 23 tag did go to a guy with max points. So if you're looking for a rocky tag and you do not have max, you're pretty much reduced to looking at the 27 uh, south, 28 north, or the, the 27 north hunt. And if you're looking to do it without a guide or you're limited in your ability to get around, then it's 27 south, 28 north is what you're looking at. But, I mean, that's a great hunt. Lots of sheep. Uh, you're just gonna have to pick through a lot of 160s, 160, 160, you know, 160 type sheets to find that bigger ram. Good stuff. I want to thank the listeners that have uh, stuck with us through all this. Brian and I both are numbers guys, and you know, we've we've picked this apart pretty good. And I just appreciate the thoroughness, uh, Brian, uh, here. Uh, spending time with us i want to thank you guys the listeners for your support uh, day after day on this podcast and um i get uh, constant feedback from you guys and uh th- that's what i do this for i do this for your feedback so i encourage you if you want to send me an email do so uh j scott that's j-a-y scott outdoors at gmail.com you can also follow me on instagram at j scott outdoors feel free to send me an uh a direct message through Instagram. That's usually a great way to uh, get a hold of me. And um, I just want to thank you guys for your loyal support and for you numbers freaks like we are. Hopefully you were able to take some value out of us crunching some of these numbers. And um, uh, Brian, I want to give you a chance if people want to get a hold of you. Number one, how they can follow you. And number two, how they can get a hold of you. Uh, You can get a hold of me on Facebook. my Facebook handle is just my name, or you can, I uh, also operate the bow hunting in Arizona record book. Uh, so I operate their Facebook page and their Instagram page. And we have a website, bowhuntinginarizona.com. You can go on there. Uh, we put out record books every eight years. If you're looking to get some more numbers and statistics and things like that, or you can contact me at my email. It's brian.rimza at hotmail.com. Feel free to send me an email. If you don't understand something or you, you need a little uh, in-depth information or, frankly, if you just want to ask about, you know, where you think you want to put in and run it by somebody. I Just like Jay, I love to talk hunting and I love to help others out. And, you know, if you draw those tags that we have some experience in, don't hesitate to, to ask. You know, we'll do what we can to help you out and uh, we'd like to see people be successful. That's the goal of doing these podcasts, give you some informative information. For sure. Um, Brian, uh, just to be clear, um, the bow hunter um, record book, uh, you are also an official scorer. Um, but uh, how, how do people uh, enter their uh, trophies in uh, the bow hunter record book? So the bow hunting and Arizona record book committee, um, they have a website. You can contact any of the measures on the web on the website to have an animal measured. I'm the chairman of the committee. Um, I am an official Pope and Young measurer, as well as obviously a bow hunting and Arizona record book committee measure. Um, so I can I can measure anything that's harvested with a bow. Uh, and if you have something that's harvested with a gun, as far as Boone and Crockett, I can get you in touch with the right people. But, uh, you know, I encourage you to check out our website, check out Pope and Young's website, look at Boone and Crockett's website. It gives you some informative information. Um, our record book gives you kind of some harvest statistics. We're getting ready to put out a new record book. The goal is uh, middle of next year. We'll get the new record book out there with all the updated information and updated harvest uh, stuff in it. So, I mean, I enjoy the numbers. So, you know, if that's something that you enjoy, then uh, give us a shout. Check us out. Right on, buddy. Thanks uh, so much. And congratulations on uh, winning the the series, the 3D uh, Arizona series. Uh, and uh, thanks for spending time with us here. I know that the listeners are going to get a lot of uh, great information from this episode. And, uh, yeah, we'll be chatting down the road. I know uh, your wife's got a great elk tag in, in uh, Unit uh, 23 uh, coming up uh, in Arizona uh, on a rifle, uh, early rifle tag. And I know you're pumped about that. And I know you've been training as well for your, uh, I believe in August you're leaving uh, to go on your doll sheep um, mountain caribou hunt. Um, so that's that's exciting. And I'm excited for you to go because you're going to Arctic Red River. It's, it's the same place that I'm going next year. 
uh, next summer, July, I'm going. So uh, you're going to be able to uh, go there and um, kind of pave the way and, and tell me if there's anything that I need to be prepared for. So you're kind of, uh, I'm, I'm pumped for you. I wish I was going this year with you, you guys. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm anxious to see how you do. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait. Uh, it's going to be a challenging hunt, but uh, it's going to be a good time, and uh, I can't wait to do it. So it should be a it's going to be a great year. A lot of good things coming. So. Right on, right on, buddy. For thanks for spending time with us. Uh, I'll catch you later. Okay. Sounds good, buddy. All right. Bye. Bye.